Twitter. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to Wowhead Weekly number 237. We have a special show tonight with a very, very special guest who uh, apparently knows a lot about World of Warcraft. <laughs> Uh, before we introduce him, let me uh, start by introducing myself. I'm Annie, also known as Annie Fuchsia, a full-time streamer on Twitch, and I also play a lot of World of Warcraft. Such a coincidence. Uh, next up, we have our lovely co-host, Perculia, and I heard that she also, indeed, plays a lot of World of Warcraft. I'm Perk, uh, Iron Wowhead. I spend a lot of time... Uh making Wowhead uh, a better place, like uh, working on the calculators and the data mining and the news articles uh, and the guides. Um, and usually I have a special guest, uh, Brightpaw, but he's <laughs> off somewhere, but we have an even more special guest. Uh, you may have seen him recently uh, discussing covenants with Ian Hazacostas. Uh, without further ado, a very warm welcome to Preach. Yay. Hi, everybody. Hi, well, thank you for having me. I'm going to stay this close for the entire thing because I'm special, apparently. Yes, <laughs> I'm you are. Special guy. Yes. <laughs> I'm you should like wave your hand and have lightning guy. effects in the background. <laughs> He's a special little guy. Yep. There he is. We can zoom you in even more if you want to. Oh, uh, it's yeah. okay. Nobody needs that. <laughs> Absolutely nobody needs that. Yep. Very, very special guest indeed. Yeah. Mm. How's it going? Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining yeah. us. Yeah. The timing think, worked out really well. Well, uh, we've never crossed paths, right? Like, as far as I know, I think I saw Peculiar at the Hilton Bar, maybe? Like, <laughs> yeah, I sort of run around frantically uh, covering <laughs> BlizzCon. But yeah, it's weird, like, we've never actually, like, said hi. I know no. you've met Ketsu, but yeah, it's... <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's usually funny. things like that where we just bump into each other because our realms <laughs> don't overlap. So it was like Ketsu was just in the room at BlizzCon trying out Shadowlands, and then we were looking mm -hmm. at stuff and she was like, over my shoulder, like, picture mine <laughs> like, yeah <okay. laughs> snapping pictures of all of us playing but yeah and i've never never i don't think we've ever been in the same room any as far as i know No, i don't think so either like i don't think we've uh, been in uh, an online conversation together either so i've never really spoken to you so it's really really mm. nice to have you here uh, i have been uh, you know seeing your youtube videos and i love what you do so having you here is a great honor it's awesome thank, thank you for you. coming yeah, it's always nice. Yeah, the timing right. is really great too. Yeah. Like I know Kat I was gonna schedule this. Mm -hmm. And then like before we knew about the interview. And then the discussion came and I'm like, Oh, the timing is so good. We'll have you right on after the chat with Ian. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that was yeah, no cool. one knew about the interview at that time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely no one Secret. knew it was gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we, we can have a link off. for the interview. <laughs> yeah. uh, Preach, you put it up on YouTube as well, right? Afterwards, so we don't yeah, have yeah. to have a Twitch link. If we could have the YouTube link for the interview, that would be great for those of you guys who may have missed it. Uh, the interview happened last Friday, I believe it was. And yep. yeah. it was uh, not maybe exactly an interview either, but it was like a conversation between Preach and Ian Hazikostas, and they were talking about uh, all the Shadowlands things that are interesting right. topics. Yeah. I actually think, I know a lot of people are used Perfect, to you. viewing interviews as this thing where the devs reveal some like breaking news uh, soundbite that makes a good article and it's like very rapid fire questions. And I don't think people are used to an actual discussion and back and mm -hmm. forth. So I think it was really good that, uh, you know, we had a discussion like this. Uh, for example, last week with the Shadowlands event, I had this in-depth art interview and it wasn't exactly flashy headlines but it was really cool to get you know deep dive uh, questions and answers from someone uh that's like you know super into the art side of blizzard so I, I think it's good to challenge expectations and to do more thoughtful back and forth um with the developers yeah mm -hmm. it was amazing like I didn't, my cat is sitting on my keyboard. <laughs> I didn't find out about it at all until thursday morning and i did it on Friday. wow oh wow As yeah, usually we have a couple of weeks notice and yeah. you know we do the usual yeah. stuff where we kind of put the questions together we put them out to the community and then we send them over and they go okay we're going to kind of kind of hit on these topics uh but i woke up thursday morning to a message saying hey can you do an interview tomorrow <laughs> with uh we'd like to get it before the week oh, it actually said can you uh, do you want to do an interview with ian which is obviously yes we want to do it before the weekend and i was like it's thursday <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but he really want to do it for the weekend. So I was like, well, yeah, sure. Obviously, obviously yes. Yeah, we can totally do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it wasn't until the Friday, I think, uh, the, the actual day of it, that uh, they then came to me and said, we, we, we really want it to be a discussion. We don't want it to be an interview interview. Interesting. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I was like, I, I think it was really too. Well, I've never heard of them doing that. So I was like, okay. Yeah. Uh, cool. Um, so I... I'll be honest with you though, and I think this is what they knew as well. Really wasn't going to be an interview. <laughs> it was going to be a discussion, regardless. I had one question, and that was it. So it was like, I was it. Over. yeah, I was just going to send that over. Um, like, what do you got? What do you want to talk about in the interview? I'm like, just the covenant. Po- oh, player power, not you know, not specifically right. yeah. covenant, but player yeah. power. Yeah. Um. So they knew that as well. They, it was very much we were both like, yeah, we know what this is going to be. Uh, mm-hmm. There was no, there was no doubt whatsoever. It's like you could call it an interview if you want, but I'm only going to ask one thing, really. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was, it was good to see they said that though. They were like, yeah, we want it to be a discussion, and it'll be tomorrow afternoon. Oh, t- yeah, that afternoon. So yeah. Like, okay. All yeah, right. That's yeah, regardless really nice to know of the the, uh, of the mm-hmm. answers actually inside, you know, the interviews, I think that Blizzard's cadence of having more interviews on streams and trying to vary who does them or doing, you know, deep dives with art like I've had in some other magazines. I think that the communication, uh, at least from a PR standpoint, has been more open than in the past where, you know, no one discussed anything during Alpha. So this has uh, been better than ever. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've oh, texted yeah. for them since the Burning Crusade. Like, uh, it never has it been like this. Never. Uh, and it's, it's such a testament to how much we've changed our relationship with Blizzard. <laughs> like two years ago, they wouldn't even speak to me. <laughs> and like now it's like, okay, we can do things like this. So yeah. it's, it's no, been awesome. such a great change. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah it has. It shows like, what a beer, the data mining a beer can do. Side. Like with data mining, it's all like, oh, the secrecy, and you know, we can't talk about the thing until it's actually on the server and it's confirmed. But I think it's really neat how now they're actually talking about things that can't be tested yet, but people are still discussing in the data mining, whether it's, you know, legendary powers a few mm-hmm. weeks ago or, you know, confirming the jailer model based on data mining. I think it's good that they're actually viewing, that they're recognizing it, that it's something that the community uh, mm-hmm. discusses and is passionate about instead of, you know, sort of pretending it doesn't exist and hoping it goes away. So mm-hmm. uh, I think that's another good example of them changing their perspective on things. Oh, for sure. They, they even commented about customization, right? right? Which is a, like not super important of a topic, but they even commented on the customization things that Wowhead had, or other places too, maybe, but that Wowhead had. Oh, yeah, the blue eyes. On, on like, blue thank eyes. you so much for yeah. commenting on that. I was answering. So we're doing like these like elaborate, you know, uh, diagrams showing, proving why these customizations were existing. It was so nice that Blizzard confirmed it so mm-hmm. we didn't have to keep writing essays yeah. on that. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, Preach. I think I interrupted you at the same time there. No, I, mean, I agree 100%. Like, if we, I, look, I, I, I always, uh, I've had a couple of interviews with them now. We look back to BFA Alpha, mm-hmm. where we were screaming at the top of our lungs, you know, like, it, you know, yep. wh- why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> and it was just dead silence. It was just absolutely. Yeah, I think I remember with weed. BFA Alpha, there was just nothing. And then they had a press event. And I want to say April, three months into it, and then they introduced Azerite and data mining them, and then it was like a a big info dump at the start of April, uh, and they 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 didn't even talk about Azerite in the build up to it, and then it was almost too late. So I'm glad that they're using this alpha to be much more public and not shrouded in secrecy about things. Mm-hmm. I thought yeah, this was a recent uh, sort of big difference scene, but you mentioned that it's uh, something that you haven't seen even since the Burning Crusade, and that's huge. Because uh, no, I, I haven't, I haven't really been that involved in all the betas, all the different expansions. So my my perspective is the last few, and hearing that is also uh, amazing. Yeah, I mean, I've been playing since Vanilla, and I started at Wowhead in Cataclysm, so I've been doing the press cycle for quite a few expansions, mm-hmm. and while it's gotten like it, it slowly got better every expansion, and then it just got way better uh, in Shadowlands as far as like the interviews and communication. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's yeah, that, they were that's very awesome. cool at BlizzCon themselves. Like talking to the devs, like not the more the ones you're more familiar with. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the the guys who were doing a lot of work in the back, and they were just so open and ready to talk. And I think they found a lot of trust in a lot of dudes. 
Like mm-hmm. that's that's yeah. the, my impression is like we can trust you, trust you to talk about stuff and not go like I've got a scoop, you know, and I'm going <laughs> to reveal it and all yeah. this kind of stuff. And um, like we said after the interview with Ian, it's like I personally have no issue doing this kind of stuff off stream because there was mention of that with a couple of guys. Uh, that maybe during Shadowlands we would actually get to go over there so we can have a more internal dialogue uh, mm-hmm. about things. But obviously coronavirus. So that changed. And now it looks like they still wanted to pursue that. It wasn't an empty thing. You know, it wasn't just passing off like, oh yeah, maybe, you know, maybe we can talk to you guys during development. Mm-hmm, okay. Uh, <laughs> which if it was like BFA, yeah. I would have expected that. Yeah, I would have been right. like, yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, but now it seems like no, no, let's, let's have that conversation. Let's, let's sit down and talk it over. Mm-hmm. And we're doing one on the dungeons uh, in a couple of weeks that I'll be hosting because I don't know anything about High Mythic Plus at all. Um, right. And those guys have the same conversation like during the MDI. It's like, yeah, we'd really like to get you guys in to talk about the dungeons and things like that and how it might affect, you know, especially the casual player base in their runs. So looking at how our dungeons designs are going, and again, Corona got in the way. So we kind of said, okay, well, we'll, we'll host it. Why not? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think it's a great idea, especially with the affixes finally getting their changes and Blizzard admitting that they're not really sure what the seasonal one will be and they want to try out different things. Um, and especially, again, tying into Covenant Choice, how people are uh, so concerned that, you know, they'll, they'll need to be locked into a Covenant Choice to be good at raiding or dungeons. So I, I think that having that in a few weeks would be really timely. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's really hard to pick. I mean, you guys have played it, but... <laughs> That's, you know, the leveling experience is not a good way to pick your covenant if you care about the abilities. Uh, I, I've been playing for months now. I still don't know what to pick. <laughs> yep. It's, it's yep. very, yeah. very, very difficult it's really to like, interesting say, this is the one you're going to choose. Because it's like, they did say they gave us, they wanted to get the covenant and the class pruning out to us early so it wouldn't be a repeat of the Azerite situation. But then as the alpha and beta goes on and on, uh, we keep learning about all these aspects of the covenant that we haven't been able to test yet. You know, it's like, oh, well, we've got the signature in the class and we can test them in Torghast, but, you know, there are legendary powers coming, there are mm-hmm. soul binds, there are conduits, and you're just like, okay, well, it's like we don't have all the pieces of the puzzle to test it together yeah. uh, at this point. And that's we're finally we getting well. some, but still yeah. not all of it for all classes. And that's the part that can also be a little bit scary because that was, it was along those lines that they were thinking with Azerite, right? Like, well, you guys didn't see the whole system and that's why you thought it was bad. Right. And maybe maybe there's a similar thing there where right now uh, the concerns that we have about Covenants uh, might be hopefully not brushed off in a similar manner because we haven't seen the whole thing. Uh, but I do think that they are introducing all these things into the betas a lot, lot faster than in BFA. Uh, so it it feels like there's uh, still hope to make sure that, uh, that our voices are heard and are able to change things for the launch. Yeah, I think it was really good how they made the class and signature abilities uh, very accessible for testing in Torghast. Mm -hmm. uh but you know i want that same level of accessibility and uh you know just being available to Mm -hmm. test on the beta for all these big you know missing moving components that we uh don't know a ton about it's a big system (laughs) like we don't even have all the legendary powers for all the classes yet data mine Mm -hmm. like rogue is a total mystery Mm -hmm. rogue's been a mystery since day one (laughs) yeah they're all a lot of abuse from the rogues like i'm ignoring them (laughs) I'm like, dude, yeah. there's nothing here. <laughs> like, yeah, like we posted the legendary powers and people are like, why isn't WoW had data mining this? And I'm like, <laughs> like, yeah, we just don't like rogues. there. Like, what do you want <laughs> yeah. to do? I can't mine a hole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they haven't even got their Torghast powers yet, I don't think. And that's been done for the other classes for a couple of months now. And they still don't have their yeah. Torghast powers. Feels yeah. Bad. A lot of the conduits are missing too. Um, for, for many classes. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, and uh, monks are still missing some. I think we just have Windwalkers confirmed, Brewmasters or no Mist- Mistweavers they tweeted out. So, uh, you know, I just I just remember, you know, like, le- like Legendaries and Legion were such a big transformative part of things. So when we don't have the full picture for Legendaries yet, I'm like, oh, you know, I, just, I feel like we need to have a better sense of Soulbinds and Conduits, especially with this... 15 rank system and the legendary don't do yeah it. don't do it yeah <laughs> i know <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I was wondering if we should uh, quickly okay. touch that topic since we're mentioning conduits. Yeah, um, we might as well. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so the, the TLDR is that we took a closer look. Or So we're, we're building a Soulbind calculator on Wowhead. And one of the devs was like, hey, I'm improving the conduit slots and it's scaling up to 15 ranks. What What's up with that? Uh, and we took a closer look and we found that in the data, there were in fact 15 ranks tied to every conduit and the bolded part of the tooltip is the part that scales up. So you might think, okay, this increases your damage by 5%, that's minor, but then when it's 15 ranks higher, it's increasing your damage by like 30% and then it's a way bigger deal. Plus everyone is wondering, you know, do you just get a better rank if you do mythic difficulty? Is this something you start at like level zero and you grind up to 15? It's, uh, there's a lot of stress so when questions. you see something that has ranks to it. Mm -hmm. Or it could just be like a remnant system that they're not using and that's why they never said anything about it in any of these interviews. Cause Correct. I, I, I think it's really strange <laughs> that you had this discussion with Ian and uh, Ian purposely discussed conduits at the end and it would be strange that he brought up conduits, but not this, like, different level. Hiding the fact yeah. it could be an infinite grind type thing. If they come out of this, the, the <laughs> look, right? It's stressing me out. If they come out of the expansion where it's like, hey, wasn't that fun to regrind the same thing over and over yeah. again? And then be like, yeah, but conduits, dominoes. <laughs> Just be like, okay, like, are you trolling me now? <laughs> like, what's going on? So I think it might have been an idea and it just was sent on its way or maybe this way just... they get destroyed they, they didn't tell us yet but the truth is well you don't want to have the one you already farmed because you want the next rank that's why it's okay that they get destroyed they're so painful right now as well <laughs> like even even though i have access to a vendor that sells them all it's still painful yeah. because they're spec specific yeah so i'm like okay i want to play frost just check it out do some testing on the beta test and i'm like okay i have to go and get some more now even though i had a bag <laughs> full of them and i'm just i'm actually like gradually starting to get irritated and i'm like mm, yeah. please just let me swap them please uh i don't know i feel like conduits like nerdily might have been an early idea that hasn't that they're not really fleshing out too much and it's kind of in there and they're like yeah because the, the bonuses aren't particularly exciting you know 10 percent more damage five percent more damage things like that um, if it's 50 percent more damage at rank 15 what are you doing to me i feel like i've walked into this now and you've got spears out and he's oh, like, I mean, what he does. It's like, tell him it's going to be 50%. <laughs> yeah, that would be bad. Well, the thing is, with conduits, if they're that strong, they just dwarf the soul binds. The soul binds are pointless. They're just... That is know, also very true. Then they're the genuine just gem over. slots. Yeah, the, yeah. the conduits are just more important, regardless of what your soul bind does. Yep. Then, yeah, and then that you only wouldn't for... line up with... It wouldn't line up with the vision of, oh, you know, you should feel... You shouldn't stress about swapping your conduits. You can just get another one. Uh, that wouldn't really fit with that vision. Mm -mm. So. No, so I think it's probably just an old idea because we, mm -hmm. we saw, we've seen a lot of that in the alphas. Every now and again, I've had to do several videos where I'm like, yeah, you'll see a thing, but it's not a thing. It's just something that's still lingering around from mm -hmm. the early, early days. It's fine. Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen so many things like that, whether it's, you know, like a model for a mount that's not used or, you know, something with garrison, uh, the mission table they decide to scrap or, you know, some interesting spell system that gets uh, less complex as things go on. Or, you know, even like the Mel Arden wheel set, we data mine the full set and they're just like, yeah, people hate this and they just totally scrapped it. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, I, mm -hmm. think that's, I think that makes sense. Yeah. These things do happen a lot. It's just a funny thing to comment because covenants are kind of a, a hot topic even without there being ranks. So um, it's funny to see them. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's very, really, I think that, that's kind of the byproduct of the enhanced communication is it's been more divisive than ever. Because when we were screaming about Azerite armor, it was kind of just like, you're a doomsayer. That's, you know, it's not going to be that bad, blah, blah, you know, because mm -hmm. there was no, nothing to work with, right? There was kind of a grace period where they didn't give us any as, right? So we couldn't really say, well, there it is. Uh, yep. But this time around, it's gone the other way. And uh, it's really strange the us versus them attitude a lot of people have about this. Uh, which <laughs> yeah. is, what do you, you know, mean? Watching... It's not us versus them? <laughs> No. Really? <laughs> it's it's like Alliance video versus game. Board. There like, are always two sides. Yeah. There's always people be two are making sides fighting. And things. <laughs> I stand by my choice. I'm like, we're talking about a game, bro. We'll be fine regardless of what happens. Yeah. <clears throat> I um I did think uh it was interesting how you know Blizzard never wants to reveal something in progress 
um, before it's, like, polished. And then at the end, Eden is like, hey, we're trying something new. Like, we don't know what conduits are becoming, but we're going to tell you that we agree destroying them is weird and we're in the process of changing it. Like, that may not sound satisfactory to some people, but when you consider the years of communication we've had where they just flat out wouldn't comment on things, I think it's a big step that they wanted to, like, pull the curtain back a little bit and say that they were in the process of revamping their decision. Yeah, You really have to squeeze point. it in there. Yeah, like, we had to... <laughs> it's like he really wanted to say it. <laughs> I think he planned it, because when we had, yeah. like, pre-conversation, he was like, I know you want to talk about covenants, and then he said conduits. Now, I, I, I my team, the guys... We talked about what do we want to hit and conduits came up and we were like, we don't really care compared to this. Like conduits are a problem, sure, but priority wise, this is the problem. So I think he probably expected that we were going to dedicate some time to conduits, but it just did not happen at all. Uh, and then at the end, he was like, because I knew he had to go. He had to interview somebody, I think. Um, and then he was like, but, but I've got this thing to tell you. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> I was ending the interview and he's like, whoa, 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 we've got this other bit to do. Mm hmm. So, like, were there any other questions besides the, you know, minorly conduits and obviously mostly covenants that you wanted to bring up if you had more time? Or were you, you know, pretty happy that you spent most of the interview focusing on covenants and Ian threw in that, you know, surprise conduit thing at the end? Um, we could have gone on for probably about three hours because it was like a, a yeah. philosophy type discussion, right? Yeah, it's um, fascinating. Yeah, that was the point of it. And, um, it felt like the, the feedback I got is, is I think he was quite into it at that point. Um, yeah. But obviously we're on stream and time is limited uh, mm -hmm. for him as well. I mean, we've met a couple of times and there's a story between each one, which is <laughs> yeah. it's, it's really weird stories about how I bumped into Ian in the past uh, from being like really bad to it's okay now to now. Um, but if, uh, the, the feedback, uh, there was, I think some people expected like he would, change his mind or something and i was like there's no director of a video game as big as world of warcraft he's going to sit on a call with a youtuber for an hour and go oh okay yeah i'll just reverse everything right that's <laughs> that was yeah, never that, gonna happen that was a funny right. thing i noticed too yeah it's like people were like oh i wish his response wasn't like that i was like that's not what was ever going to happen here the point mm -hmm. was to just discuss it and hash out potential problems mm -hmm. and stuff mm -hmm. um and if they are going to make changes it'll be something they take back if, they, if we made a point that they hadn't properly considered which does happen it's happened in other interviews i've had where they've gone we haven't thought about it that way mm -hmm. then we'll see some changes happen um and it'll be down the line a little bit but i know for all the topics i wanted to hit yeah loads loads and loads niggling little things that are annoying mm -hmm. i would like to have talked a lot more about why we're doing really 100 percent class-based things instead of understanding this nuance between the specs which drives the covenant abilities wild in terms of practicality because they work for yeah. one they don't work for the other and you know you, you are running into these problems and i remember they... in the wow head shadow priest article there was i forget <laughs> i think it was like this one line was like there's a lot of things going on with this covenant ability but absolutely none of them apply to shadow priest yeah, yeah. none of, yeah, none of them work for shadow originally yeah. zero mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> which is really sad Somebody who works for us is uh, a main shadow priest. He, he just was like, I just hate this game now so much. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, he was really quite sad because he was like, okay, I'm just letting you know now, none of the covenant abilities work at all for shadow in any way, shape, or form. They make no sense. Uh, and I was like, they must do something. He's like, no, literally, they do nothing <laughs> at all for shadow yeah. priests. And uh, I was like, well, so what's the tone of the, the, the video be? Because he'd done the testing phase on it. And he went, I hate this game. Shadow priests are dead. <laughs> I was like, well, that's not very helpful. And he yeah. sent me his template of notes, and it was just like the scrawlings of a madman, like you know, like the Necronomicon of shadow priests. I was like, this is this is not good. And then luckily, the shadow priest Discord was like, yeah, we agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we agree. And they reached out to us, going like, thanks for because I said I had the interview with Morgan where I brought up shadow priests, and they were like, thanks for trying. I was like, I'm doing my best. You can only do so much. Sounds, I remember like it's uh, a sad time for Shadow they keep Priest talking and about like yeah, how they ahead. want to be you know be inspired by Legion and like Legion had class fantasy and like it, but you also had you know spec fantasy and nuance there, and people seem to uh, appreciate you know aspects of that. So uh, if you're going back to that model, like you know maybe maybe make feel have the specs feel uh, interesting as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at for least sure. have the Covenant abilities work. <laughs> 
Well, it is. I think I'm going to main a Death Knight, but like the Covenant abilities, they work so differently. I mean, a Death Knight is one of the things that has like the most similar style of play across all three. Yeah, right? right. I mean, yeah. now even Two Handed Frost is back, so you can have you know you could be kind of the same character across all three. They're very and even then, the way the Covenant abilities interact with each of them, it's like, well, this makes this really fun. This one makes this really fun. Mm -hmm. And I like playing both. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and you start, you start shaking. Like, yeah. You know, you know, so that's that's where the uh, the sort of argument came from. It's like this, forgetting soul binds, forget conduits, forget Legos. Like just this bit is annoying you know, on its own. Oh, the conduits that don't, you know, change that you have to keep destroying when you want to change specs. Yep. Mm. And you're just like, Ugh. like, I've seen so many people saying that, oh, you know, uh, I really feel this aesthetic of a covenant, but I feel forced into this other covenant because for my main spec, mm -hmm. uh, I'm a raider and, uh, you know, I can't be this other covenant because the ability does nothing for the spec. I, you know, play mm -hmm. competitive play, but I really mm. want to associate myself with this other group. And it's kind of strange with Blizzard's decision because so much for casual players is about like customization and expressing yourself and your character's identity. And the Covenants uh, really, you know, lean into that with their all their cosmetic stuff. You get like the the cloaks and the really colorful abilities. Uh, but then when it comes to Covenants, it's like, oh, your character actually can't really express the personality for the Covenant. It has to be. You know, based yeah. on the, the I guess I'm lucky in that respect. I, I I don't care about how my character looks at all. I get forced into transmogging by my audience because right. I really <laughs> don't care. Yeah. And they get angry. They're like, "Why are you doing them shoulders? Like, what? What is? Why aren't you fixing it immediately <laughs> oh, no. after getting a loot drop?" And I'm like, I don't belt. care. <laughs> like, yeah, wrong belt, wrong, wrong braces. Belt. <laughs> why those yeah. braces though? They don't match. I'm like, oh, yeah. I couldn't care less. It's just different. interesting how like you know the the top uh the more top end players have issues, but then like the more casual people are also like, well, like I also have this issue where I feel I can't you know. If, mm -hmm. if I care about the story and I can't, mm -hmm. like, I'm a night elf, I want to see Ardenweald, but I can't be, you know, the continuation of Tehran because I need to be Venthyr for, you mm -hmm. know, practical purposes. I agree. Um, so, so, Preach, for you, with these covenants Ooh. being different choices, and uh, uh, let's imagine a... a uh, scenario where you can decide to take out things from it such as for example player power there's no no longer abilities stuck to your choice uh mm -hmm. what would the what kind of interesting things that are tied to these covenants would make you interested in them at all in that case if player oh, power the weekly is events weekly yeah events. the week the weekly events so cool okay. when he mm -hmm. uh, when like he announced party. those uh, see, I don't like that, but I think it's fun for some people, right? Throwing parties, yeah. Yeah, I did the party three times. I was like, I don't like this. Like, this is not for me. But you did it Running three times still. <laughs> well, I have to it's test cool. it, right? That's yeah. why I'm there. I do yeah, have to test yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, this, this, I get it. It's mm -hmm. not for me. This is really, and the, the idea of doing this every week is mm -hmm. not my jam. But there's a boss rush right up my alley that Kyrian mm -hmm. has, right? Well, I'll be goddamned if I'm gonna do a Kyrian Death Knight. There is just no way <laughs> <laughs> that is not happening unless that changes dramatically. There's no way. So I'm like, <sighs> so you you, you feel like the you feel like those events can then carry the whole Covenant thing on its own because m maybe the worry from Blizzard can also be that if they remove player power, there is no reason to play Covenants at all. Well, I guess what I, I guess the reality is the selfish reality is. I want what is the least consequential for me. Mm -hmm. So, because of course, right? So, if you drift from the people who care a lot about their character's power and efficiency in different environments, all the way to the guys who it affects not all, right? So, there's a huge delta of players there. Mm -hmm. So, on the one hand, if you're down at the end where it doesn't matter what you have, and let's just let's take some theoretical guy doesn't care about his character, really likes themes and cosmetics, story stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, he's really mm -hmm. into that. The, cho the choosing of the ability is like a zero-sum game. It doesn't matter because it doesn't affect what they're doing. So there's no real meaning there. It's a meaningless mm -hmm. choice, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have all the way to the other end where it's, for me, the choice mm -hmm. of the ability and what I do is a huge deal. Yeah, like, it's everything. a massive, massive yeah, deal. Yeah. Like, can I Breath of Syndragosa for three times longer if I choose Venthyr? Yeah. Yeah, I can. That's a big deal to how mm -hmm. I play that character, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So for me, that choice of ability is a massive consequence. However, the flip side of that, of course, is 
the theme means nothing to me at all. <laughs> like, it yeah. means, yeah. it's, a, it's a no consequence for me. Mm-hmm. Whereas the other guy, the, the theme is a huge consequence. Yeah. So the only logical middle ground to satisfy everybody that I could think of really was that if you free it up, those guys can still do everything they want to do. And so can I. And mm-hmm. are we both in an idyllic scenario? No. The likelihood is I will have to choose probably let's say i have to go vent there it means i have to do a vampire vampire party every week <laughs> i'm not going to enjoy it i will serve that tea yeah i will i will deliver heads to lady vash baroness mm-hmm. vash i will deliver those heads but i yeah. won't enjoy it and at the same time people might be annoyed that you know this ability that maybe has a little bit of consequence to them or none at all is are annoyed that i'm it's not permanent even though it's sort of a little consequence. And it's hard to manage all those different feelings. For sure. Because every, everybody's got a different level of consequence to each of these choices, right? Mm-hmm. I imagine the worst person for this is probably maybe like Peculiar just said, right? You really care about the theme. You really care about the story you want to see because mm-hmm. you're interested in that story. But if you were also really concerned about your power, you're really at odds. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So like those, like those people uh, this have is feedback. so hard from like the wowhead class writers who you know like are really invested um in great like they're invested in lots of parts of the game so it's you know like they're top end you know in their guilds but they also enjoy playing and like collectibles they like doing everything and they would like to Mm -hmm. have a faction that you know represents them yeah Um, for sure and just a note about like the pure collectors i mean i just looking at legion and thinking back on analytics and data things like the hidden artifact appearances um or like the class mounts that stuff was super popular on the site like evergreen content always being looked up so i feel like if blizzard leaned covenants more in the direction of the collectibles it would still appeal to a ton of people if you just like leaned into the vibes of you know hidden appearances and collectibles and cool mounts and pets i think you would get a lot of people um mm-hmm. still really hype about that yeah, that's yeah. what actually made me want to ask Preach how he would look at it then, because I feel like I uh, I also think it's really interesting to look at the themes and potential transmogs, potential other kind of vanity things, mounts, pets, etc. Um, so if Covenants were no longer player power, I would still be interested in picking one. And I would be a little bit more okay with being stuck with one Covenant because it doesn't affect how strong I am. I'm okay with making a choice which makes me look in a certain way and uh, and that's okay. So then uh, th- that's why my question was then leaning towards, okay, you, you said that you have no interest uh, on theme. You don't really care. What's important to you is that you, your character can do, you know, uh, can have abilities and power uh, at its best. And that's what matters to you. And that's why I was curious, like, how, what part of the Covenant would interest you in that case if player power was no longer a question? Oh, uh, the theme. Like, to say it doesn't affect me is because I'm talking about the level of consequence, right? Yeah, yeah, so uh, yeah gotcha. That's my, gotcha. It's different than what I would like. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. consequence is not the same thing. Like, if I could choose what I would like, mm-hmm. um, from what I've seen so far, I would probably go Kyrian because they have okay. a lot mm-hmm. of things that I really like. I, mm-hmm. I think it looks pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not a big fan of I was really hoping to enjoy the Venthyr. I love the zone, but the Vampire Party has really put me off like mm-hmm. in a big, big way. Okay, so... no, don't have free plan <laughs> parties. Yeah. It's, it's... <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what it is. This is why it's so nuanced and it's hard to have these discussions. And I think that's why Blizzard wanted to do it because it's such a complex issue when you break it down into all the different elements. Because we're talking about consequences. We're talking about what is it you really like. I would really like to choose the one I enjoy the most. And, I know, um, and I'm and i also completely fine with being tied to a covenant. That was never what we were discussing. It was just detaching mm-hmm. the player power element. Yeah. And the reason for that is it's a huge consequence to me. Mm-hmm. Because when this game launches, Blizzard's going to build these huge walls. Mm-hmm. And they're going to be differently shaped walls. And mm-hmm. they're going to be massive because they always are. And these abilities make an enormous difference when we do that. Uh, I really do think the casual player base is going to be so annoyed once they start seeing regretting their choice because the leveling Ooh. experience is nowhere near good enough. I'm most concerned about communication from patch to patch. and uh, mm. and hot fixes. Like they always, you know, uh, nerf and change abilities mm-hmm. several weeks after raids open. You know, they adjust things uh, on mythic difficulty or after heroic week. Classes always get tuning. Uh, you know, weapons get tuning. We saw this a little bit with Corruption, where 
uh, several weeks after the patch came out, uh, people's uh, corruption effects would be massively tweaked or procs on their weapons, and you'd see, oh, I just, you know, got rid of this item, and now I've got a huge buff. Maybe mm -hmm. I should get it back. Yeah. And I feel like we're going to see this on a much larger scale with uh, Covenants, and people might be saying, oh, you know, I picked this in the first week. Uh, I didn't really read up on WoW. I didn't really read up what's going on. It seemed cool, and now there's nerfs and buffs, and I don't really want this covenant or maybe you swap away and then the covenant gets buffed and you want to swap back and now you have this grind so i'm just uh, uh a little worried how they're they will handle uh sort of like the you know progression hot fixes and tunings well, with history's covenants. not on their side with that one is it no and that which is what i was arguing with ian is, is his yeah. idea is really idealistic and great and i, I said that soon it's like your idea is fine like the idea of it mm-hmm the reality though is what i'm seeing what you're actually presenting to me mm -hmm. and you know we're saying these things and we're saying yeah but it's it's not that it, it's great that you want it to be x but it's actually a y and it's not working that way you know no mm -hmm. matter how many times you tell me that it's going to be an x it's always going to be a y and that's where it kind of fell down for us and um that was another um, one like go ahead before i no, 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 that's fine. Yeah, okay. Uh, I was on on the topic of uh, seeing X, but there, it's actually Y. Um, mm -hmm. It was interesting to hear Ian's uh, perspective of uh, group finding, a LFG tool and similar, where people uh, judge people uh, based on what they saw on MDI. You know, like your spec sucks, so I don't want you yep. in my group, or your class sucks, I don't want you in my group. And uh, it was interesting to hear him say all that. And then still uh, say that because covenants are harder to swap, uh, it'll be less of a problem because I, do, I don't see that happening. Uh, if covenants are, um, you know, a, a big enough difference to, uh, you know, have an impact on how your Mythic Plus is being played, I, I do think that if uh, two people with the same, uh, say, spec uh, gear and experience uh, is the same and then they have different covenants if one is more um, wanted than the other one I feel like that will become a deciding factor and I don't think people will be excused because oh uh, yeah you know this covenant isn't that good but like I know it's a struggle to change it therefore like I'll invite you anyways um, so I, I thought it was interesting to hear how he understands the struggle of L F LFG uh, but then doesn't think covenant will be a problem if they make it hard to swap. He thinks it's a bigger problem if they make it easier to swap. Yeah, yeah. let me ask you uh, this question, if I could. Mm -hmm. What feels worse to you? You fight for locking in and you, you, you convince what Ian said could happen, and it could. Mm -hmm. uh, I happen to think that, you know, add-ons and things like Raider.io, for example, will probably build in the covenants or something like that. Um, to, and it, cause there's a reason those add-ons exist. They help get more successful groups together in general. Mm -hmm. So, that might build in. What do you think feels worse? That you, yeah, it's the permanent choice, but due to the nature of how you play the game, you start to feel if you are being locked out because the covenant abilities are that way, and they could go that way because historically these things have gone that way, that you then feel the need to abandon the one you really enjoyed after you'd committed to it and Blizzard said, you know, it, you shouldn't need to do that. We're going to make it pretty much the same. And there are going to be players who are like, if I was say, if I was Kyrian, I wouldn't be in this situation. But I don't mm. like Kyrian. I don't want to do it. Because we know you can swap. And later down the line, they're like, <sighs> okay, I'm going to go Kyrian now. And that feels, and I don't want to, and blah, 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 blah. And that's the fear I really have. Because it's all, we keep dragging this to the top end. Or it's certainly, like, a lot of the conversations go that way. We're going to play around it. And I tried to make that clear, right? We're going right, to play right. around it from the start. Like, there's no way that's not going to happen. We don't want to. We absolutely do not want to. But because we know how the content's going to be, mm -hmm. we're going to play around it. And everyone else, it won't really matter. I, I see the things like, oh, you won't be able to kill X boss. Uh, that's probably not going to be the case. It's, it's probably going to be fine. There will be some outliers that are really crazy. But in general, you're going to be fine. There's, there's really mm -hmm. not that big of an issue. What mm -hmm. I think it will hit is that pugging player base pretty hard. Oh, because yeah. you can't right. change human nature. So if if yes, you, who's pugging, right? Yeah, who's pugging? The guys who wants to get their key done. They want their weekly done. They mm -hmm. want their chest done. They want to raise the key. Yep. Are they going to look at a list of names with item levels and potentially see their covenant and think, well, that guy will have more success for me? Because that's all they care about. It's a very selfish game, pugging, right? You mm -hmm. want your key to do well. That's it. Yeah, you don't you don't have a personal connection. Yeah, just I don't it care done, about your loot. <laughs> if, yeah. if, in fact, I'm hoping loot drops for you you don't need 
give it to me. <laughs> That's what I'm yeah. hoping, right? Yeah. It's, it's yeah. a very selfish system. The pugging system is very selfish in it most really cases. Is. So is this Venthyr guy going to have give me more chances of success? Mm -hmm. I'm taking him. And that's the limit of the conversation as far as I'm concerned, which is yeah. why I was really confused. I think I said that too. I was like, I don't understand what it is you're saying to me right now because that makes so little sense to mm -hmm. me in terms of how the game actually works. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, again, it feels a little idealistic to me. No, it's it's a it's a very good Say. point you made because when people make these groups in LFG, what they look at is how do I increase the odds of making it in time? Uh, mm -hmm. If uh, having the right covenant increase that by one percent, then I will go for it because I I don't know how good these players are. I can see their Raider IO, and let's say they have similar numbers. I can see their gear; they have similar numbers. Oh, I see that one person picked the correct covenant, so he might potentially know more about his own class's spec, or potentially cares more about his own performance. Therefore, I should go for him. I'm more likely to do better with him, and. Mm. Even if Covenant may not be visible in the LFG by default, it's one of those things that will quickly become an add-on. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we are talking about what-ifs. They could nail it. They could absolutely they could. nail it. They could. Doesn't look like it. <laughs> like, based on what we can see in the game, <laughs> it doesn't look like it. Uh, because even you know, even the abilities don't work across specs right now, like in an ideal way. But it could work. I mean, I've always got some faith in that. I'm, I'm definitely mm -hmm. more pessimistic now after some of the ridiculous balancing we've seen on these systems over time. Mm -hmm. uh, but it could work, and if so, I will be the happiest man in the world to be wrong. I can't. I when that when that hate train comes for me on Twitter, and they're like, "Ah, you were saying all this stuff and it didn't happen," I'll be so happy. Mm -hmm. I'll be so happy. I'll be like, "Oh, cool! Thank <laughs> God, <laughs> that's awesome." I also see some comments so in the just chat. Say Oh, go ahead. No, I, that's chat's probably more interesting to me. Go ahead. What were they saying? <laughs> well, if you wanted to comment this, you can go ahead and then I can comment the chat. Oh yeah. I just was also saying that uh, with the MDI, I remember in Legion, the groups felt like there was a slightly more variety. And uh, to me, it's a little sad just to be like, oh, you know, the accepting like the same matches in BFA, that's just going to be the norm for the MDI. I think that's a little sad. I think it would be interesting if the rules were such where you could see more uh you know diversity like people picking different compositions or uh you know pre uh, covenants with your pre-mates for different dungeons because i think that would be more interesting uh i feel like legion was more hype than bfa because there was a more degree of things being unexpected and then in bfa it's like oh you know it's the three rogues again we've, we've seen this before it it wasn't as interesting to watch so <laughs> it was it just was like a little yeah, so it would be uh, it would be neat if Shadowlands could introduce more variety For to the sure. MBI instead of being like, oh yeah, well just accept the MBI is gonna have like the same specs and covenants doing the same thing because yeah. it's a marketing tool for Blizzard and if you just see everyone using the same covenant, the same soulbinds, the same conduit, that also sends a message to the game that you know there's like only one good covenant to use for this type of content. So mm -hmm. I think. If they could have more, if they could encourage more experimental play, whether there's like bands or they design things in a way where you can use different covenants, I think that would be more interesting as a viewer. So that's my anything, little side I think digression. you should get a guild where this stuff will yeah. matter way less. Like, I could pick I mean, whatever I want and I could do a Yeah, you try yeah. and find people who really don't care and you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And you won't need to worry about any of these things at all. It'll just be kind of mm -hmm. scuff for us. Yeah, mm -hmm. especially fine. as the expansion goes on and, you know, people tend to drop off after, you know, their subs run out for that first month. Um, If you have a guild, you'll still have a group of friends to go with. Mm -hmm. Um, But as time goes on, if you're trying to pug and there's a fewer, smaller group of people, then the rules might get more stringent if uh, as you're pugging mm -hmm. if you, a few months into the expansion. The, the yeah. thing that I wanted to comment is uh, a few people in the chat are mentioning how the idea of what is best is only a mentality of the people in the top ends. And mm -hmm. I, I would like to comment that because sure, it's the min maxers at the top where it actually matters. But uh, I can definitely let you know that even people who are very, very casual still use those uh, ideas that they have learned by watching, for example, MDI and make their groups based on that. So even if they're told, hey, the difference is only 1% or 0.5%, if they have seen it and they see all these really good players play like that, or if they've experienced themselves like, hey, 
you know, when I invited a warlock, he did so much less DPS than the demon hunter. Why should I invite the warlock in my, into my mythic plus when there's a demon hunter who's also signed up? And I think there's going to be a similar thing with covenants too. If there is a covenant that's better, then, you know, they'll just pick the one that's better. Uh, if you're a warlock in the chat right now and you try to sign up for mythic plus and then you do the same, you relog your demon hunter that's worse a geared and lesser a raider IO, you would probably more likely be invited on your demon hunter than your warlock. It's it's just because that's the mentality of everyone and it's not min maxers that we're talking about. It's everyone. It's the min maxers that find out what is the best, but it's everyone who uses it as a basis of like, making decisions. A lot of people you know, people that aren't streamers or have like a job tied to the game, they have a limited amount of time to play and they, you know, when they play any game, not just WoW, they want to, you know, type in something to Google, like, what is the best weapon? You know, what is the, you know, best DPS? Like, they, they just want to know these things, you know, corruption vendor, you know, what corruption is worth, be is worth, you know, buying this week. They just want to know those things to streamline uh, the process to have a more enjoyable experience. People mm -hmm. don't want to waste their time. It's that simple. Yeah, when yeah. someone's putting yeah. together a Mythic Plus Pug or a Raid Pug, they want to win. They want to get yeah. the thing thereafter. They're they don't just, want to be doing math. <laughs> no, they don't care about your story or your back history. Because yeah. I read, a, I get some of these letters. <laughs> and, <laughs> and they're really idealistic. And honestly, I wish it did work this way. But it's like, why don't... why? Do, I've tried joining a lot of Pugs. I keep getting declined. And it's like, why don't they give me a chance? And they don't ask me about my history or anything like that. I'm like... You've no idea what it looks like on the other side of the screen when you put up a key and you say looking for DPS. It just goes and it just fills oh, yeah. with <laughs> names. And if oh, you're yeah. really not in the real world, if you think people are going to say, okay, let's whisper this guy. Hi, how are you doing today? What is your mythic dungeon experience? I'm just going to look up your armory. Have you got any other Let me cross so reference it. Make sure you're going to take the most lying. base information and think, what is going to get this? I just want my key done. That's it. I want mm -hmm. my heroic pug to go well my normal pug to go well and people will draw information from the top end whether it be raiders whether it be pvpers whether it be the guys right those are the guys writing your guides right that's where all yeah, that yeah. info is coming from they're giving you yeah. that information why it works that's what that's what happened i mean i've, I've casted the world first race where we've seen how yeah, important yeah. swapping one class over is it's really mm -hmm. that important at the top end to, to be like i've sat there and watched you know scribe and mirrors and roger who are giga brains calculating strategies and they're arguing about a hunter over a moonkin and then <laughs> you'll see the rogue come in and make his case and he's like well i've got two minute cooldowns we can use it here here and here and they're like i don't know man because we got this going on and that's how important right. it is at that level and you're just like it is important to us but then that filters back down into everybody because they go well this will give me a slightly better chance uh, I agree. It would be nice if it wasn't that way. I'm not sure that saying, like uh, like Ian was suggesting, that if we make it so they can't really swap, then it won't be a thing. Yeah, that's what I'm I, like, I, I, I'm like, I just, mm, Yeah, I was really confused. I was like, uh, it's, it's nice. It's nice thinking. I don't thinking. think so. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's nice, when, so. like, a few months ago, Ian was saying, we only knew the Covenant and Signature ability, how Ian was like, oh, you know, you shouldn't be uh, hyper fixated on what these two abilities do because they'll be even more so it will be de-emphasized and everyone took it as like oh my god like there could be even more potential abilities to make you know one covenant uh op now we don't have to worry about you know it's not just the covenant ability that could sell us on something there could be all these other factors and it just like every uh, every factor becomes an exclamation point and ian's like oh you know having so many things will will minimize and it's like no it just gives more avenues for people to worry about one uh being the best yeah i mean you gotta respect his effort though and that's yeah. what it came back to it's like there's no disrespect or anything there like that isn't really and i, I think i said that to him i was like it's a really admirable goal i can't oh, buy yeah. into it oh yeah personally i can't buy into it but your goal is admirable it's a really noble goal to go for i just mm -hmm. i i'm i just don't think you can change human nature is that when that guy who finishes work comes home and he's like i need to get my weekly done my guild's already done it. My friends have done it. Then, oh, they're not online. I'm going to throw a pug together. They're going to look for the easiest route to success because they want to get their weekly done, get their nice chest, and they want to go to bed or they want to go play with the kids and want to cook dinner. 
what they're not going to do is sit down and say, well, I'll take a chance on this guy. <laughs> they're not going to do that. No. You know, they're going to look They'll for what for is the best, best off. Yeah, what's the best food like... at the buffet at the time? That's <laughs> yeah. the way we work, right? We go to the buffet right. and go, right, what's the best food for me here? I'll take the best food. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. And I did that too many times, and now here we are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I also feel like just uh, seeing the difference between vanilla and classic should also be um a wake-up call to the developers that human nature has changed you know it's not like vanilla where we didn't know how to level and gear up and we were cool you know playing the same class with a strange spec because we didn't know how to make gold to respec or we didn't know how to you know roll another class like it's it's so different now like there's you know bis is a thing you have people clearing blackwing lair in 18 minutes in anixia and you know 50 seconds it's such a different um mentality now and to me blizzard should be like okay we designed this game one way it was iconic for being played one way and now we see 15 years later people are approaching our game very differently Mm -hmm. and that to me is a clear sign that Mm -hmm. human nature and gaming trends uh and Mm -hmm. how we process information and what we enjoy uh has changed because we were all idiots back then you can't treat the game the sense we were, we're such like, we idiots back then. yeah yeah i remember people like arguing whether hitting was... spell hit yeah. is that good what hitting the boss like this is the burning <laughs> crusade we were like get kit capped but in classic yeah. it was like ah, i don't care i'm gonna go for like loads of crit it's gonna be massive and then you just it's like is armor p- yeah wrath it's like armor penetration good for you know rogues or people that have like weapon damage like wow this is such a concept it's like yeah, yeah I- it's on so the tin, armor I penetration. Like, I, I've got this yeah. Molten Core footage from original Vanilla when I was playing, and there's a Warlock in there with a pirate hat on. And I now know it was a green, like, statless pirate hat that he raided in. And <laughs> me now would just be like, get out, get out. But at the time, I was like, that's so statless. cool. You're yeah. a pirate. <laughs> that's so awesome. My and college people... roommate was a fire mage, and she's like, I like how this looks. And it's like, fire in Molten Core. Like, Oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I wonder why I can't do damage. Yeah, <laughs> and it's you. like, oh, but like you know, it's she would like show up on time, <laughs> and like she was okay on the meters, and she would always do water, and she wouldn't, you know, die, and she helped organize things, and she was like a valued player. And then you know, her damage went up in AQ, but it's just like, oh, we're having fun together and just hanging out with our IRL friends doing molten core. Yeah, be whatever spec. And it's like, why yeah. would you do that? Yeah, it, was, yeah, it was a new experience, it was a you know. Time. Yeah. yeah, different yeah. times, which is okay. Like, you know, things change over time. Yeah. People became better. People want to push themselves to become better. Uh, having said that, there's still, of course, a lot of people who don't care about those type of things. And that's why what Preach mentioned before, finding a guild with similar mindset to yourself is the best yeah. way uh, mm. to do it. Uh, but even if you are in a guild, the, the reason why the pug community is so important to consider is because everyone finds themselves at some point not having any friends online and they need to do mm. their you know plus 15 before the next day because maybe they can't play the game the next day when their friends are on so they have to do it now and in those moments that's when you're you know exposed to the whole pug mentality of things that are striving for meta comps and that's why uh, making two big differences and walls of places where it's difficult to change uh, your your decisions such as you know player power behind covenants can be uh, really difficult uh, in terms of uh, pugging. What I've always wondered is, uh, it seems that while Blizzard is chatty about many aspects of the Covenants, one thing that I sort of feel like we're slowly pulling out of them is how exactly you change them, and they keep revealing little tidbits here, and they're like, oh, like, it will, you know, you can swap them easily. Swapping back, we're working on it. Oh, swapping back, maybe will take, you know, a week or two, and I feel like it's been really elusive looking at all the event coverage to actually get a concrete answer on like what that will involve we sort of keep being fed it in little you know spurts like oh your progress will be saved i got that in one interview oh it will take maybe a week or two i got that in another interview Wait, and i feel like this progress is... saved yeah uh yeah like oh, your renown and stuff will not yeah exactly yeah, cause like, cause i thought it gets reset spread out no <laughs> yeah, it i doesn't. thought it gets yeah. reset and there's a catch-up uh, mechanic so that you can catch up a bit quicker that's if there you is swap. There's the catch up, so if you swap, you can kind of get back up to where you should be. But yeah, but the renown. Yeah, you keep all okay. your rewards. You don't have to regrind stuff. But yeah, I, I feel like this is something very important, and uh, they haven't just sort of unloaded the full answer. We're not even really sure yet what you have to actually do. Just that we mm-hmm. think it will. I'm sure be they don't like... know. A week and a half. Yeah, I just yeah. I feel like that would be something that would be good if they could just say everything in the same interview, like you know your renown is saved, 
it'll take like a week, a week and a mm -hmm. half. We're thinking of maybe this type of grind. Um, we don't know the specifics, but maybe it will involve, I don't know, collecting X amount of anima. I just feel like that sort of stuff would be, mm -hmm. uh, pe that is something people are concerned about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sure they haven't gotten, uh, they, they have no clue how it's supposed to work out or what they think is an appropriate time. But again, it's not, uh, swapping covenants isn't what I don't think most people are even asking for. Like, I think most people are fine with committing to a covenant. Because uh, they can experience, it's like class campaigns, right? You can experience the other stuff on an alt and you're kind of okay with that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, I mean, like, I have, seen, stuff. I have seen a lot of Wowhood analytics where people are, at, like, they are, um, they're just curious to know exactly what is involved with swapping that. Oh, yeah, we all want to know how it's done. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah. Right. Um, mm -hmm. In general, for the topics we've been talking about, I don't think it's mm -hmm. what people are really after. It's, I mean, that's mm -hmm. more a case of what could I do if I screw it up? Because the choice is actually. Uh, I did submit a bug report because it's kind of, it doesn't feel like you're making a really weighty choice in the, in the beta yeah. right now when you're actually <laughs> committing to it. It's like, okay, choose a covenant. Right. You're like, oh, okay. Uh, and one thing I've been <laughs> doing is warning sign. I've been a sneaker. Uh, I've been, been, been sneaky beaky and going into the streams of the guys who don't know any of this stuff because they talk about the 1%, but watching shows like this and reading forums and knowing all this info, that's your 1% right there. Like so many people have no clue about any of this stuff. So I snuck into a few streams of people who got beta and had no idea about the Soulbinds, had no mm. idea about the Covenants. They mm. had no clue, uh, even though they're top tier players. And they just were like, oh, okay, I need to choose a Covenant now. So they just ran in a circle and they went, that sounds rubbish. That sounds rubbish. Just looking at the abilities. Just the abilities, that yeah. 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 The they gave color. I'm going to yeah. go with that. Yeah, Nothing else matters. Out, like, Matt's okay. Uh, then they went, that one, that one's rubbish. That one's rubbish. And then they picked another one, and they're like, oh, okay, that one sounds okay. And they just clicked it and then went on the way. And I was like, I don't think you really understand what you just did there. <laughs> like, yeah. I really hope they make that very clear. And it wouldn't even, it'd be nice if it, they had like some sort of, you know, during the pre patch, if they could be that period of time to test it in some way. I think mm. that might be something they could consider doing before unleashing this on the player base is during pre patch, there's like a week where everyone gets to try these abilities out. Mm hmm. Something like that, like their visit, or I don't know how it would work because the story law stuff probably doesn't mesh, but something where you can go and magical. Try it out. We're going to a different magical land that anything can happen. Yeah, because <laughs> I, I, like, so I've played for weeks. I still don't know. I still have no idea because they all work differently. So something where the play base could be a bit more ready than just the leveling experience who are getting into it. That might I be, feel might like be worth. they haven't done beta keys yet. And I don't know uh, the full schedule if they're coming, but something they did with Classic, which didn't have keys, is that they would have those uh, stress tests or like free weekends to mm -hmm. everyone. And uh, if they could do something uh, similar, especially when the hype for beta invites is high, uh, you know, focus testing, everyone gets to, you know, play like a Kyrian this weekend or everyone gets, to, you know, play these abilities, you know, you get to try, try them out. Uh, I think that could drive some... Uh, focused, you know, uh, just just get some data from people that are not just, you know, the 1% that are, you know, playing WoW every day as part of their, you know, jobs or, you know, content mm -hmm. creation. Get mm -hmm. some more, you know, casual people, like those people that are just like, oh, cool, like, I'm going to play WoW this weekend. Like, what's a covenant type thing? I mm -hmm. would think that would be such a good idea. I, I yeah. love that idea. Just a Kyrian weekend, Venthyr weekend, uh, where you can go. And it just It's on the, the launcher. Go and try this out. Mm -hmm. Before you yeah. get in, before the Shadowlands officially launches, so you can feel pretty comfortable about what you're choosing because you don't get to see most of the stuff. Mm -hmm. Like in the leveling, yeah. you get the abilities, you don't get the soul binds while you level, you don't get the themed events or anything like that. So there's a lot of extra that comes at the back end. So it'd yeah. be nice if they could let and people like, mess with them on a wide scale. In that Shadowlands event stream, like I was feeling very surprised and overwhelmed by all these systems they were throwing out. I'm like, oh, I had no idea about this. And I'm like staring at the data every day, you know, mm. looking for hints and scoops. So it's like, if I'm feeling overwhelmed, like, oh, there's different, like even cosmetic stuff, there's different flight networks. Like someone's got a party. Oh, yeah. There's different anima systems. Like there's, you know, even more cosmetics. I'm like, your average person is not going to know any of this. They're going to, you know, maybe, they're, they're going to maybe know that there was like a covenant uh, armor set and a class ability, but they're not going to, realize the full extent so the focus mm -hmm. testing weekends i think would help uh get feedback as well as just raise awareness of what the covenant entails yeah for sure what if yeah. these special covenant specific abilities would be access to anyone who is you know finished that initial quest line with them and uh, what 
difference it makes with the covenant that you pick is that it themes that ability with that covenant. Yeah, that's what we said from day one. I think we said that at BlizzCon. Oh, you said that even back yeah. then? Oh, Literally at BlizzCon. Yeah, we were like, yeah. okay. Great minds think alike. Yeah, we do, we do immediately. We do, as soon as they announced it, I was like, oh no. Because <laughs> they were like, there's no think... more Azerite power. We were like, yeah! <laughs> we are like, going to do this covenant thing. We were like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think they could make them look really cool, especially after seeing these uh, essence uh, abilities that we've had mm -hmm. now during this expansion. Uh, seeing the rank four versions of a lot of them, they, you know, they stand out a lot and they look really cool. And imagine if they made them very uh, themed around those covenants. I think that could be awesome. I mean, going back to what I was saying about customization, they've worked so hard to really have you express your character, and they've even had, uh, you know, effects that can make you feel like you're playing, like, a, a sub phrase, like, you know, like a, a Wild Hammer Dwarf or the Burn Scars to show your character is at Teldrassil. Mm -hmm. There's so many ways to express your identity to look how you do IRL, but also to reflect maybe your character's backstory if you happen to care about that. And yeah theming you know picking your covenant being like you know i care about the night elves and i've got my teldrassil uh customization and now i want to know what happens to them so i can customize my abilities to look like the teldrassil night fae faction mm -hmm. i think would fit in really well with this focus on you know personality through visuals mm -hmm. yeah same i'm yeah. We'll see. <laughs> so we'll see. yeah conclusive <laughs> thing is let's get these abilities with a uh, themed uh visuals and then everyone's happy yes no no <laughs> never there is zero case where everybody is happy zero i feel <laughs> like people were happy with the winds of wisdom buff I like i don't think people were, i don't buff? think people complained about that <laughs> that's like the one thing i can think of i think that was the 100 percent experience buff right yeah oh, I <laughs> yeah didn't, i didn't need that <laughs> that lasted indefinitely oh, we have one person in chat who says i hated it yeah, that's oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, it's over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I I think uh, I think it's really good that these things are discussed now, at least, and that Blizzard is listening. And it's going to be interesting to see what kind of solutions they come up with. Because like you said, there seems to be a lot of different information being thrown everywhere. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see what path is actually the one that it will take. Yeah, we're waiting Save now that. to do numbers. Go ahead. Yeah, we're just yeah. Wait, we're waiting right now before we kind of start looking at the difference where it is because they're nerfing. We don't like from a content creator point of view, we don't really want to do too much because we know it's all changing. Yeah. So we know they're nerfing and changing a lot of the covenant stuff, uh, the soulbind stuff. So it's mm -hmm. like, well, there's no point in really talking about soulbinds. But also, mm -hmm. the clock is ticking a lot, Blizzard, <laughs> and it's yeah. like it's ticking pretty quick at this point compared mm -hmm. to when the game's coming out, and we're like. Yeah, so now that it's yeah, just different than the point I wanted to make before, but uh, like we don't have a release date yet, and they keep saying fall 2020, which in business terms could be up to December 21st. So I almost wonder if uh, things are going to be more staggered than we, uh, you know, it's not going to be like the. I wonder if they're going to run out of time and things will be more staggered to tune the max level content more. Like obviously we know the raid's not going to launch the day the expansion comes out, but I just wonder if. Like we don't even know we don't even know when the pre patch is coming, and yeah. there are lots of uh, leveling discrepancies between expansions. Uh, we yeah. don't have the heirloom replacement yet. It just feels like there's a lot of things that need to be tested, and we still don't have the release date. So it just it just makes me wonder if stuff will be more mm -hmm. spread out to account for delays, either because of the complexity or you know COVID disrupting the workflow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have no issue with them pushing it back either. I know people. Oh yeah, hate yeah, that, I want but... a good game. Yeah, yeah, I don't Blizzard, want it to take launch your time. Mess. I mean, if we th if we're really uber pessimistic to the point of being irrational, it launches every the, the balance is just all over the place. It's like corruption 2.0, mm -hmm. right? It comes in, it's right. just all over the place for the first couple of weeks, and then there's panic nerfs. People are going to be choosing their covenants, and then they're going to be like, "Oh my god, it's changing yeah, dramatically." Made the wrong and choice. Stuff. Yeah, I know a lot of players, certainly in my circles, who are like, I am not choosing a covenant when I can, which is bizarre. 
but that's yeah, their right. opinion. It's like, I'm going to level, and I'm just going to start leveling again. Because I absolutely do not have any faith whatsoever. They will immediately start. Have one of, one of every covenant, and then you swap between your cloned characters. Not even that. <laughs> just start getting the alts ready, because they just suspect the covenants, the soul binds, or something are mm-hmm. going to change like immediately after they get in the, the hands of all the players. Mm-hmm. So they don't want to choose a covenant. <laughs> they just want to leave their character and go to start leveling an alt. Yeah. No, I can, I can definitely. scary point of view. Mm-hmm. I can definitely see that happening with a lot of people who take uh, their game performance very seriously because uh, whatever is best in the first week might change a couple of weeks later. So you don't want to get yeah, stuck with like it. Yeah, like I was saying, like what happens if Blizzard hotfixes something and all of a sudden that's why it needs testing. That other covenant is better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, for <laughs> sure. Uh, we spent a lot of time talking about this, and as much as I'd love to continue, maybe we should try to jump into some other topics too. Um, Let's see, because uh, I, I I realized on the topic of covenants as well, uh, I was like, wait, soul binds. That's another issue that I think is an issue at least. Um, that there's not different soul binds for different specs. So you're kind of like forced to think about all your specs as you're fixing your soul binds. Um, but uh, yeah, is, is there any kind of topic that you guys would prefer to jump into now? Uh, oh yeah speaking of beta in general by the way this has been a large question for me probably a lot of people coming to preach as well uh, the shadowlands beta does not have beta keys so if you guys see somebody selling beta keys uh, it's all a scam there's there is no beta keys to be found which was similar to the previous uh classic experience as mm. well there were no beta keys and don't wait for no, the email no either beta. please don't wait for the email it'll just be on your battle net launcher oh yeah yeah. Exactly. The emails you are can a massive scam. They really are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Don't wait for email. Just open your launcher and click that little drop down menu and you can see if you have it. And also yep. don't forget to actually opt in to say that you're interested on that. Yeah, very important. Yeah. I actually I think people are doing a good job of looking it up. I the opt in email was the most popular news post <laughs> this oh, past yeah. week yeah, yeah. traffic wise. So people have been looking it up at least. Because mm-hmm. people don't know. So they um they don't know where to turn if they're interested so uh it's it's a good thing to mention um do we have a link maybe if we can get a quick link we could also throw that into the chat for One that second. Pull yeah up. yeah yeah we, we can get that um yeah you can look at the notes as i'm just grabbing the link okay i'm gonna drop it in discord or google docs better yeah the google doc i, I have it open okay. so Let's see. And also, add-ons are working on the beta, which is also yeah. great news for a lot of people. Okay. Well, you know how Feel bad. Here, how to opt in. There is the link. Yay. So if, if you're sitting there angry about why you haven't been invited, uh, if you haven't opted in, that's because it's impossible. Uh, so make sure you've opted in at yeah. least. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, do you want to, do you want to discuss some actual new beta news or anything general on the state of beta? I think we were sort of moved into that. Um, we could recap the latest build if you want Mm -hmm. and yeah, why don't we do that? Mm Mm-hmm. I want to talk about this uh, thing that was found in the beta, the, uh, the new player guide system, which is interesting. Oh yeah. That was something we data mined a few weeks ago, and now it's sort of up in the beta in like a half finished state. Um, mm-hmm. We can pull a picture of that up on the screen. Yep, I'll get it. Um, up. It seems like you need to do a few things uh, as a veteran player in order to be part of this guide system. And you need to, uh, you know, complete, uh, namely, Battle for Azeroth Pathfinder Part 1. Um, be max level and have your account be in good standing. People aren't sure if that means you know, in the past year or in the past 10 years, but just as a count in good standing. And uh, you can't actually test it out, it's bugged, but it seems like you do this and then you become a guide and you get a special channel and a special icon above your head and people can ask you questions. Yep. So it seems a little uh, bare bones. I think the system is really overdue and needed. This has gotten a very positive response when we post about it. But yeah, I, I wonder if it will help curb toxicity if um, instead of asking a, qu- a question in general chat and people yelling at you, you can ask questions in a chat that only people that are in good standing uh, will respond to. Um, but I also wonder if there needs to be more incentives for people to 
uh, want to do this, like, you know, maybe if you sign up, you get like a, a pet similar to have you have an authenticator, you, you mm -hmm. get something special. Um, do you not yeah, think this is going to work, Preach? No, they're calling me out because my account wasn't in good standing. It is! Oh! <laughs> I missed that. I, yeah. I'm fine, thank you very much. I've paid my, <laughs> I've paid my price, okay? For a time. Yeah, he's, yeah he's, uh, he's been in prison, guys. He's out I have. now. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, but in general, stop I think it's... Stop remembering things, honestly. If you're remembering stuff, get over it. Go out with someone else. <laughs> yeah, that's the internet for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, apparently you have an emote called guilty, so I guess you actually are guilty. Yeah, that came back and bit me, didn't it? Mm. <laughs> Preach, what do you think of the system you cannot join? <laughs> what? <laughs> you have no proof! <laughs> no, I have done Pathfinder Part 1, okay? <laughs> uh, all right. I think your emote says otherwise. Um, <laughs> but do you want to comment on this feature that you have no access to? This is cool. Uh, there are so many people out there who do want to be that helpful guy. I, I worry how the trolls, <laughs> there'll be people, right. you know, who are going to sign up to this just so they can tell brand new players that they yeah. should move to like an RP realm and go to Goldshire <laughs> and things like that. And that's where they're hanging out. Yeah. Uh, that will be a thing, but hopefully they can weed those guys out pretty quickly. Other than that, yeah. there are loads of people who just want to chill in the main city and they just want to talk to people all day and kind of help them out. And that, mm -hmm. for that, it's great. Mm -hmm. um, it's good that they're letting you ask them because when I first started doing guides, uh, the first like year or so of doing guides, I was uh, I tried to like help people directly. That doesn't work <laughs> at all. So it's better when people come to you when they want some help. That, that works out really well. Oh, yeah. And I think a lot of people, when new to something, might be afraid to ask questions. So having it visible that this person is open to take questions, I think, is also great. So it, it's a, it's a good mean... thing to be introduced. We were just talking so much about the max level experience, but I remember, I want to say back in Warlords when the movie was coming out, I had some talks with Blizzard and PR, and they were talking about how they hope to get new players uh, that see the movie uh, into WoW, but the biggest hurdle is, you know, people in, like, uh, like level 5 range. Like, so many people just, like, log on, go, oh my god, all these buttons, and log off. So... The new player experience is very important and it seems that between this guide system and doing things like making the character creation screen look more modern or you know the class mm -hmm. animations look way more hype and welcoming they're trying to you know maybe get those first time or returning players hooked that would otherwise end at level five and i think that you know wow hit isn't really catering to those players you know we play all the time we do max level stuff but that is uh sort of like the silent portion of the player base that they need to do a better job converting into, you know, leveling happy players and something like a friendly uh, new player chat system could help people that could otherwise feel intimidated or quit if they have, you know, their first experience is someone yelling at them in general chat. <laughs> oh, just trying to sell yeah. them stuff immediately, right? Yeah. Right, bind us off, bind us <laughs> off. Like, Buy heroic the vision. They log heroic in, vision. you know, the moment yeah, here, yeah. join my yeah. guild, contribute to the guild bank. Whoa, yep. whoa. I mean, I, yeah. you guys might know better than me, but the forum MVP thing seems like it worked out okay, right? Uh, yeah. I, I don't, I haven't heard anything, so maybe I'm just out of the loop. But I, I mean, the program's anything. still around after so many years, so I, I think that that's a good sign that, uh, you know, usually if something isn't working, it fades away. So I think mm -hmm. it's working well. I would imagine so. There are loads of players out there who just want to be helpful, uh, so it's good. Not, uh, it's not something I would, I wouldn't want. That. I wonder how spammy it's going to be. It'll be interesting to see how it works. Mm -hmm. Like whether they'll limit the amount of messages you can receive an hour if you sign up for it, right? You know things like that. I wonder if they'll mm. put certain limitations in, so you, you're not like the only guy online, and suddenly you get bombarded <laughs> by so many messages. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And I'm is it just going to be the... another chat, like just a new chat, or is it going to maybe have its own UI? Hmm. Um. Because what if you start seeing I mean, gold it's... sellers there? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. then they infiltrate that one there's, they sign up to the new channel, player guys and all that the new people genius. will click everything <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a channel funny. called newcomer chat so okay. uh, it will be separate at least um, hilarious. the gold sellers sign up to the new player guys <laughs> uh, we'd actually laugh so hard <laughs> <laughs> oh no it's like oh you you must fill out this uh you know uh multiple choice <laughs> test <laughs> email the password and we'll send you the good player guide i'm starting oh <laughs> no to get an answer yeah. to your question fill this in oh, yeah wow. 
Oh, that Enter is not good. Enter your favorite character race <laughs> into the Still box. partly excited to hear the story of it happening, though. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to lie. I kind of want to see the report. Uh, so, oh, another topic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Ask about that, because that thing's awesome. Ask about what? Notes? This. Ask I'm doing it in the notes. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, your mouse is on it, too. Oh, the Night Fae Amphitheater. Yeah, that sounds great topic. <laughs> yeah, Preach is really into lore. Yes, um, I heard... I knew uh, about, so... about raiding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I heard that you're uh, very good um, when it comes to lore. You know Don't just about me. everything. You're <laughs> better than Tettles. Apparently better than Tettles, yeah. Which is a huge I achievement. Said worse. You're twisting it. That's not, <laughs> what I said at all. Preach and Tettles are the new like perk and novel. They're gonna take over. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. more posts. <laughs> I know the I know the Winder and the sisters' names. Yeah, so, so next time we're having a lore show, um, perk, you can uh, you know have the day off, and I'll invite Preach and Tettles, and they can you know yes. lead the whole conversation. <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> that would so, worked. because of um, many people do not understand the lore, especially the past few expansions. Uh, and Blizzard uh, has sort of realized this and put fun at themselves in this very charming quest line at the start of the Arden Wheels uh, Covenant campaign, where uh, the Night Fae are like into theatrics. That's a big part of uh, like Night Elf uh, culture. If you remember mm -hmm. Queen Ashar, she's big on theatrics. And it's really cute because you have to reenact the events of Legion and BFA using these very glittery uh, Night Fae props. And the story is told in a very tongue-in-cheek way and sort of pokes fun that some characters are, you know, cartoonish villains or things kind of take um, absurd um, plot angles or not everything makes a ton of sense in retrospect. Mm -hmm. And it's just really funny. And it actually gets across the point of the expansions very well. And I also, I don't know if this was intended, but as the story goes on, the props uh, and dialogue and acting get like more absurd and worse. Like it gets more scuffed over time. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't know. Like the Legion one to me is more high budget than the BFA mm -hmm. um, plot. So I can't wait for the voice acting to be fully done because the voice oh, acting is yeah. amazing for what they have in so far. It was honestly the best quest I've ever done in World of Warcraft. Like, yeah, it made me take notice this. of what was happening. Mm -hmm. is, it's not <laughs> yeah. easy. That's not easy, but I that is it's. I'm going to use the word and they're going to help me for it, but it is adorable. It's an adorable <laughs> part of the game. Unfortunately, again, buried in the Night Fae, but it is absolutely yeah. adorable. <laughs> Blooper is Cahoon, and then Cahoon runs off because he just wants to play. And the, just to see the crowd go, wait a minute. <laughs> like, I like how you Sarah yeah. is just like sighing dramatically, like, yeah, why are they at war again? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> come on, guys. Then yeah. the Zoth just being the four scuffed tentacles. <laughs> yeah, with the props. Yeah. So good. It really is. Oh. And then they're just going like, so it just, a sword stabbed a planet? How does that work? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, well, I used to work in um, environmental affairs, and this makes no sense. Let me tell you, you can't just stab a planet. <laughs> just, yeah. It's like, Anduin's horse looks too realistic. Let's turn it into a unicorn. <laughs> And then it's like Sylvanas is the evil war chief, and like Anduin is like the dumb naive king. Like it's just, I'm, I'm glad they leaned into it and just were mm -hmm. sort of highlighting how mm -hmm. it could be really um, ridiculous sounding at points. Even like Gul'dan, it's like we defeated Gul'dan. No, the other Gul'dan from another planet. Did I get that right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. How does that work? <laughs> yep. The There's a lot of comedy in it. Best. Yeah, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. it's, I've done it twelve times now. And uh, it, it's you know if, if it isn't that bad by that point, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. It's pretty. That's good. a ringing endorsement. So you're gonna really be happy when they do the character wipes after you've done this. Yeah, it's part of the job. I'm okay, but yeah, <laughs> it's it's uh it's one of those things you gotta deal with. I just thought it was gonna be tonight. Actually, that was the pain because I don't. I kind of nearly right. got everything done tonight, and then the server went off, and I was like, please don't. <laughs> Not today. Just give me a day. I wonder if they're fixing bugs because the beta has been really uh, laggy and people keep like, you know, crashing and it's really difficult to get anything done. But I'm glad we were able to film and get this um, part up. And yeah, like we said, this is what you only access as like the first thing. If you choose Arden Wheel, this isn't part of the leveling. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you do, you know, uh, Bastion, you have a different um, 
like introduction experience. Yeah. Um, and this then, is then just for this. the people who choose Ardenfield. Yeah. Or uh, Nate Fay. Mm-hmm. Vice versa. You, you, you know when you get that suspicion that the different teams have made different things? Mm-hmm. So Ardenfield is beautiful. And mm-hmm. now it's got that wonderful intro. And then you go and do the Maldraxxus one, right? <laughs> yeah. And you think, wait a minute. Okay, so who made this? <laughs> and who made this? Because <laughs> this is not adding together, oh, right? No. <laughs> not, let's be fair. If we're going to talk about the amazing one, let's talk about the one where they turn up and like, oh yeah, come in. There's your abilities. <laughs> Thank you very much for showing up to the Maldraxxus. I feel like they, I feel like they had diff- different teams uh, working on them. Probably, like I know when, yeah. when they did those blogs, you would see different Blizzard uh, developers um, sounding excited mm-hmm. about each one. Like, oh, I worked so hard on Arden Wheel for several months. You, you can finally see my work. Uh, mm-hmm. So I, I think it was different. As a fun note about Maldraxxus, just as a side note from my art interview, uh, they were talking about how it was really challenging to make a zone that had zero trees and how they were doing like experimental things with rocks to give the psychological effect uh, of trees so it wouldn't look weird and empty and too alien. Mm-hmm. And they were actually basing some of the rocks on the beach and mountains um, by Blizzard. So not related to the quest, but I just thought how yeah, yeah. that's an interesting mm-hmm. tidbit I learned recently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, how a lot of thought went into something, then to us we're just like, oh, slimy barren, but a lot of thought went into that. Well, I feel bad now because it's my least, uh, the zone I like the least because it was, it kind of felt like I'd been there before and maybe that was part of it. Maybe yeah, it I mean, of... it's yeah. not my favorite zone either. I feel mm. like they need to have the zone for people that really like spikes and goo and that's the <laughs> that's the zone um yeah the others feel like much more high fantasy uh magical between like the you know angels and Tyrion. The camera, or is the cat enormous like he's video. enormous <laughs> <laughs> yes the cat is enormous <laughs> yeah bright pot is actually a tiger he is 15 that's not the color of a tiger you lied to me <laughs> he's a night saber <laughs> all right ride that cat I would never lie. Prove it. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite the size yet. Soon. <laughs> he no, is it a just, big it boy. strange. You come from out of wield and you, you, you zone in. You, you, when the server came up and you zoned in, it was like, okay. Yeah, this is probably the most beautiful zone I've ever seen in WoW. And then Maldraxxus yeah. came up and I was like, I couldn't wait. Because it's gonna, <laughs> I was just like, this place is going to be so metal. And it's going to show those Night Fae. Like, so stop being soft. And it's going to be just hardcore. And I logged in, it was like Silithus 2.0. I was like, uh, not still with this. What's it? Uh, Desolus. And I was like, oh, I can't yeah. tell. No, I expected it to be Mad Max rock and roll uh, all the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, not... just wasn't. it was definitely it I think it's a skybox. Well. I think it's a skybox because in Arden Wield, they really made an effort with the huge tree in the background all the time and the stars mm-hmm. in it. And then going back to that art interview, they said they actually had workshopped it in BFA because they wanted the, some parts of Drisfor to have that aesthetic and they decided against it but reused it. And I feel like just seeing that cool sky adds a lot to the aesthetic. But in Mal- Maldrax, just the sky is just sort of like, well, it's fading, you know, green to olive. And we see this mountain kind of fading in the background because it's fading. It just looks like a gray smudge. Um, so I think the sky box could be more hype uh, in Maldraxxus. And the interview actually talked about people um, being, they realize finally that when you're playing WoW, you, a lot of your screen is the sky, so they wanted yeah. to make the skies better. And I feel like the Maldraxxus sky could use something more hype. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the article was actually interesting, even from like a non-artistic... Um, uh, is that a word? Like, not, not much so, artistry in the background. It was interesting for me to read it as well, uh, just to hear their thought process, because it's a lot of things that you would look past, you would not even notice. Um, so, yeah, that was that was interesting. Yeah. So, do we have anything more in the amphitheater, or do you want to discuss uh, the Gladiator PvP mounts announcement? I yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Gladiator PvP mounts, if people did not know, these used to be character-specific. So, the character that earned the Gladiator uh, achievement for that season uh, unlocks the mount that they can then use uh, for the rest of time. And then when the season is over, that mount is gone and unobtainable. And the change now is that from what we have a uh, data mind uh, is that these mounts will now become account wide. So You're not even data mining. We have a blue post. It is official. Oh, there's yeah. even a blue post. Oh, I didn't see the blue post. On the beta, uh, my, my gladiator friend was like, 
you didn't like this. I was really confused. I thought you would. Yeah. But... Oh, what? What? Yeah. So Annie, I don't you're, like it either. Yeah, you're. Oh, interesting. So yeah, why don't you? Why don't you like it, Annie? Uh, I think there is some some kind of, especially for people who have been a gladiator for a long time. So I, I I'm I'm not. Uh, but I can understand people who have been a gladiator for a long time. They have the specific character that they worked very hard on, and then they have the special thing whenever they log into that character to show off the mount that they earned on that character. Um, that that's one part of it. Uh, being able to look back at old characters and feel like they have something special with them. Uh, the second part of it is if it's account wide, that means that you have the mount on classes that you are not actually uh, necessarily good at. So you uh, or not necessarily earned on. So you um, it feels special in a way uh, if you have earned gladiator on a class and then you maybe after a few seasons or, or maybe even years, who knows, uh, you earn it on a different class. And to be able to finally use a gladiator mount on that class feels special. Uh, but mm. now that sort of special feeling is gone. So for example, for myself, I, I wanted to learn uh, to play Resto Druid and try to gain um, uh, gladiator on it. I didn't have the time uh, to learn it, so I never got it. So that character is you know, scuffed compared to my paladin that I spent a lot more time on. And I'm okay with that. My druid cannot mount a gladiator mount. If I would later decide to play lots of druid and become better at it and then become a gladiator on it, and then I get uh, the gladiator on that specific character, that class, then I could feel like I'm proud of it and I earned something. Um, mm. And I think also uh, the PvP ladder would become a lot less active. If, if it's account-wide, you have less reasons to play alts. Uh, there's some people who gain Gladiator on the same class maybe five times. And uh, with this change, they have no reason to play those other four characters because they will get the mount anyways. So yeah, th those are the point of views that, that I yeah. can express. In I know you're also a big fan of the mob challenge mode sets, Annie, and that's sort of in the same uh, vein. Blizzard isn't changing that as far as I know, but you know, if you mastered the class uh, in mob, you got the really cool, uh, you know, transmog set mm -hmm. uh, and the mount. And, uh, you know, Blizzard hasn't done similar things to those transmog sets in the future. You know, we, we, we've asked several times in interviews, but, you know, that's to me a similar thing. You know, you are really good at that class and you get this thing to demonstrate your skill. And it would be weird if, um, you know, mm -hmm. you could access it on, you know, a class that you had no um, real mm -hmm. skill at. Well, so that's really an interesting... That's an interesting point as well, because what if they made gladiator mounts class-wide, at least? Like, I would be okay with that, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, because then at least yeah. you're still using it on a class that you're still playing. Um, so that's like one uh, one idea that I would actually be happy with. Yeah, I think a lot of people aren't really going to understand it if they haven't earned it. But it was, it was strange that you said that, because as soon as uh, you logged on and you did it, it's like, oh, I don't want this. Yeah. So, I mean, but I assume some people did, otherwise they wouldn't have just randomly. Yeah, I'm just gonna but... like quickly read the blue post just because you know, um, yeah, like it just said it wasn't just data mining, but it basically Blizzard said that um, due to the considerable time, effort, and skill required to earn one, we felt the prestige should be reserved to the character that earned one, as it best demonstrated your expertise with that class. Uh, Shadowlands season one will be the 30th PvP season in World of Warcraft, and a lot has changed over that time. Not only has the game evolved with the introduction of new classes or changes, but players' preferences have often evolved with regard to the class they like to play most. Mm -hmm. um, so that was their rationale. I almost wonder, with the AQ event coming up in Classic, if they were doing some digging on Scarab Lords and people that still had those mounts, uh, you know, which is was also locked at me, like, you know, who's still playing, um, who, who is still active that has... Uh, that old mount, are they still on that uh, same character or, or not? And I wonder if that uh, maybe led to them saying, yeah, you know, maybe someone that played a druid and, you know, got a gladiator mount in season two of Burning Crusade, you know, maybe maybe that person should be able to use it on a different uh, class, you know, 14 years later. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, I definitely understand uh, yeah. what Annie said there. I think that's something that does get lost when everything some things become account wide. It's, it's like, well, you know, for those people who did work hard for it, they feel like, well, I don't, earn, I don't, I haven't earned it on this, mm -hmm. uh, so it feels a little, it feels a little yeah. like you've watered down what I did. Mm -hmm. uh, but 
So, I mean, it might be yeah, a question. I, I, I totally get it. I don't think mm -hmm. most people will, though. They'll be like, well, it's, you earned it. It's like, yeah, but it meant a lot to me for doing it on that and the story mm -hmm. that took me to that, you know, the path mm -hmm. I took to get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think it's a big deal for people who, um, you know, might pick up a different class because they want to see if, you know, if they're able to do something even close to the, the amount that they can on their main. And uh, it can feel like a special achievement just because of that and if this was account wide from the beginning it probably wouldn't have been an issue but because it's been for so long it it kind of uh, made a culture around it in a way and mm -hmm. uh, then it's gone i think i'm not sure don't quote me on this but i think that the elite transmog sets are not um uh account class wide i think those are still uh locked to the character so that could I'm still be sure. uh, a stat, something status. Uh, I'm not, don't quote me on that, but I mm -hmm. thought I saw some mm -hmm. discussion uh, around that since PvP transmog has been, you know, mm -hmm. ever since they started adding marks of honor for older sets on yeah. the beta, that's been sort of like a hot topic as like, you know, what can you easily get? What can't uh, you easily get when Shadowlands uh, comes out? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like transmog is uh, somewhat of a newer system too compared mm -hmm. to uh, gladiator mounts. So it becomes less of a sensitive thing. Uh, people who might have like, you know, oh yeah, I used to play this hunter and I got this gladiator mount this season back in, I don't know, uh, Cataclysm. And it's still special to me because only my hunter has it. Uh, but mm -hmm. now you can use it on any character. I mean, I can see some people being happy about that because, hey, like now I don't have to play my hunter. I can use it on whatever character that I have now. Uh, but it's still some kind of like, you know, every time I logged into that hunter, it was special because of that. And now it's not special anymore. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's not. It's, yeah, I can see I can yeah. see it both ways, too, as you know. Mm -hmm. Even like when people, I think another good example would be legendaries. Like if you're, you know, when before legendaries were transmogable, uh, you might feel special um, logging on the character that had the legendaries. You know, you can, you know, AFK and, you know, put your ward waves on, uh, you know, as a rogue, you can, you know, you can just enjoy something that your other characters um, didn't have and especially if you got it back in the day it took a lot of time and effort and you had a lot of positive memories mm -hmm. uh, associated with it of accomplishment and then as they keep uh, opening things up uh it sort of dilutes that feeling of um you know pride or being attached to one specific character for sure yeah um but yeah um why don't we discuss allied races and customization oh, yeah, um, there's some updates. a bit as well yeah like we we have so much like varied news in this beta build. It's like, it's <laughs> yeah. not, like you know, like theaters, but then like PvP changes and uh, Blizzard uh, doing all this allied race customization after they said it wouldn't really be a focus. And uh, customization is always a really hot topic on Wowhead because we have that model viewer and the dressing room where you can you know preview things if, even if you don't have a character. And uh, the big discussion with Maghar Orc is that they received the jewelry the orcs got last week. And it feeds into the question of, do allied races feel worse customization-wise? Uh, do their unique things like different skin tones make up for fewer options overall? But even if Maghar Orc get things like, you know, orc earrings, does it still make up for the fact that, you know, they have, like, way fewer hairstyles or orcs get, you know war paint on top of tattoos and scars it just do allied races kind of feel like you're getting not that much for mm -hmm. having to you know do this extra rep grind and quest to unlock them yeah preach i've never felt more useless in my entire life <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of words that you said there and i agreed with many of the words that you said and i say this to you mm -hmm. sure <laughs> sure, sure. Okay. I don't know. Do my yeah. walks have less hair options? Is that a thing? Well, what, people are really annoyed with Nightborn, especially because it's like the same body as Night Elves, and they have like three hair colors, and they're but all. Well, they white. can do flips though, so who cares? Flips for days. <laughs> right? Well, they can both. Who's do with flips. me? <laughs> yeah. Right back, guys. Flips. <laughs> Okay, so in other words, uh, nobody should be upset about this. Um, this yeah. is, uh, you know, the final word after careful investigation and researching. Uh, Preach has uh, told us that there's actually no reason to be upset because uh, they can do flips. So there fact. it is. Yeah. Hot fact. How can you see earrings under a helmet? I'm so confused. <laughs> you can't, but you can hide no. the helmet. 
Yes. Oh, yeah? Did you know you can hide the helmet? I mean, I have a yak. <laughs> so nice. Yeah, that means that. you can transmog. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna put judgment on these earrings here. <laughs> There's gold ones, two gold ones, three gold ones. Then there's a silver one and silver. <laughs> like, come on, man. What do you want me to say? There's big ones, there's little ones. Well, the thing to potentially comment, if you want to, is the fact that we're giving these extra customizations that orcs had to now mm -hmm. Magar orcs as well. Oh, can orcs do this too? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Orcs can do this and like 10 more things. Oh, yeah. I yeah, see yeah, the problem yeah. then. Yeah, yeah. This is great. Yeah. This is good news then. Okay. Now I understand the issue. Yeah. So Fully on board. So, so you're on board with both of them having access to all the jewelries, like both orcs and mega orcs. For sure. I want my guy to have a cigar. When can we do that? <laughs> right? I want to like a moody 50s detective. That's what I want. Don't they have the candy cane that you can get during Wintervale that's like like a cigar except it's striped? I feel like that's a thing. <laughs> I feel like it's not. I feel, I, feel like, I feel like the red and white striped candy cane does not look like a cigar. <laughs> washed up and alcoholic, you know? Oh, yeah, that, that was some really good insight. Thank you. I'm yeah. trying my best. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, just I guess as a fashion expert, I think, I think it's interesting sure. that they're adding some uh, customization options because at first they're like, no, allied races are not the focus. And then the void elves opened up this can of worms that oh yeah maybe they'll get some things like blood elves but not everything so you know a void elf can have the eyes and the skin tone but it doesn't get the jewelry and the people are like well why did i grind out you know argusian reach to get a less cool blood elf yeah um, I agree. Mm -hmm. so oh, i mean i, I, I think again. yeah mm -hmm. i think there was a data mining thing where the it was going to be easier to get an allied race uh, in Shadowlands, so maybe that will make up for it. Because I do think it's weird if you have to do all this work and then you uh, unlock the special race that has like less customization and it doesn't it doesn't feel as cool as the uh, main races now. No mm -hmm. sense to me. I I thought they had the same. Um... Yeah, no, no they were like the, they were the orcs for the like all time. the like the ten layers of war paint. Like orcs have all these war paint, and Magcar orcs don't don't have any of it. And it's like like That's this doesn't make sense so mm -hmm. yeah i totally agree like i know it's not something i i'm interested in but it would yeah. make sense to me why wouldn't you do that like more customization the better yeah mm -hmm. That's so yeah so why don't we thing. yeah why don't we discuss covenants again we got some transportation <laughs> stuff oh yeah, yeah. so covenants <laughs> have fashion. transportation yeah. systems related to their zones and they all have a uh, slightly different looking ones i've actually got some imagery to show here too mm. yeah which so as a reminder, like mm -hmm. um, I just I want to say that this was a very new system we learned about. We didn't really know about this during the alpha. Mm -hmm. And this seems to be primarily cosmetic, but every um, covenant has like an interesting um, buff you get tied to movement. So why don't we start with Kiri? And I like the cool blue bolt that you see. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'd also love to hear Preach's input on this. No, this is the only thing I've uh, we've brought up and had a lot of discussion about is Ooh. how does this affect world questing together? And I haven't tested it. So if I want to um, world quest with my, you know, my Venthyr friend, am I just zipping around the zone, which we can do in Bastion? I, you know, we have done that, and yeah. they can't, so they have to ground mount to everywhere. I mean, how does that work? And I haven't tested it yet, to be honest. But I don't know if you guys have. That, um, that's a very interesting question yeah, um, like you're meant to you you're meant to you know play with your friends and you don't want to feel like you're locked out of playing with them well you're not or locked out like, but you, you can't wait at the right end, well yeah right? it's not as fun well, then i guess you have to walk with your friend until he unlocks it too right yeah well, if he's not part he's... of your covenant he wouldn't right no then you like... find friends in your own covenant <laughs> oh wow <laughs> or you force your friend to pick the same covenant as you well, it's interesting because the world like, quests are more not friends group anymore. style now. Um, I have tested the world quests solo, mm -hmm. and they're far mm -hmm. more group style. They're like less world quests, but they're more meaty. So there's, it's less of a case like um, a big problem like Legion onwards is most of the time spent doing world quests was just traveling between them. Mm -hmm. You get there, you eradicate the area, you move on to the next one. And they've changed them now, so they're much more meaty. They last a little bit longer, but there's less of them. Mm -hmm. So that, that I think that works really well. So it'd be interesting to see how this works with pals of other covenants mm -hmm. like you can blood mirror around with venthyrs um and you know appear all over this map but mm -hmm. you're then gonna have to 
wait for the dude to get there because he's a Kyrian. In which case, that something, doesn't really work. Yeah. Something interesting in the comments in this article is that people were saying because the perks are unique or because you can inter you can uh, instantly teleport somewhere that there could still be a use for the system even when uh, Pathfinder is introduced. Like if you know oh, yeah. you could if you could instantly go somewhere, maybe that spawn point is by like you know a rare uh, spawn. Uh, or you can just instantly go to the world quest, and that would be faster than you know mounting up and flying across the zone. So mm -hmm. I, I like I like that design element of it. Yeah, no, yeah, that's actually a very good point. Good. I see a question in the chat. Uh, I have a friend that's a paladin, and he's going Kyrian. If I go Venthyr, will we be able to do world quests together? So the topic that we're discussing right now is the actual teleportation within the zone to do the world quests. As far as I have understood, the world quest will be available to everyone, but the transportation is uh, tied to the covenant that you pick. So in this case, you will be able to teleport between the different areas of your zone uh, if you're uh, within the zone of the covenant you picked, but your friend will not be able to use it. So then what's going to happen? I guess you will probably have to run around ground mounting with your friend uh, as you're doing the quests or when you do the zone which is your own covenant you decide to do it with friends who also are part of that covenant and then you do the world quest with your friends in the other zones um, where you don't have to overlap with each other I'm yeah. not sure because the emissary system is different now it's based on the they call them is it attacks or event points something like that and it's like featured on a zone that's why you can you can do dungeons now for your for your adversaries. Oh yeah, um, that's a good point. Yeah, it's, it's so cool. You can just go and do dungeons mm -hmm. instead. Um, so I wonder if that is different, and because we unlock world quests now as you progress the system, you unlock zone specific world quests, which I'm I'm gonna guess your friends won't be able to do because they're tied to your progress of the sanctum upgrades. So what they probably won't be able mm -hmm. to do that. Mm. Ooh, I wonder. I, I actually need to get involved in this. I haven't tested this enough, to be honest. Because it does feel like a little bit of a break of the system if you can't use it because you and your friends pick different covenants. Yeah, speaking of people feeling like they can't do stuff because they've chosen a certain covenant. Yeah, like imagine you're um, in a party of five and you're all going to go do world quests and the four of you mm -hmm. have the same transportation system and one doesn't. Maybe they give access to the transportation system that the leader has. Yeah, like, oh, like, you're, you know, you're esteemed uh, guest of uh, so-and-so who is in good standing in this covenant. You can temporarily use this system. That could yeah, be not seen that so far, because we could do the full Sanctum upgrades, because right. uh, they give us all the resources. I haven't seen anything like yeah. that yet. But I haven't tried to world quest with somebody. My focus has been on classes for the last few days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, like, sense. the outdoor lag has also been really bad uh, mm. on the beta. Like, it's just, like, you're just struggling to get through those introductory mm -hmm. quest lines. Like, we've had people on WoW had like doing the quest, you know, super early, like 6 a.m. And then as more people log on, it just is really difficult to get anything done. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Oribos is, uh, you jump in and see, you love seeing where you're going to land at some points or turn mm -hmm. the quest in, but yeah. that's fine. Speaking that of world fun. quests, uh, do we want to, I just put this in the notes, we should talk about Flappy Bird. <laughs> it's not working. So people already hate it because it's broken. <laughs> We you know one of a uh, Kib our Demon Hunter guide writer um, completed it. Uh, really? Which is in, in the linked uh, article, like he keeps he's doing it, then he's like, "Why isn't this over?" And it's like twenty seconds later, "Why isn't this still over?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but yeah, we got the Twitch clip in there called "World First Flappy Beard." I don't know if you want to show some of it. It's a very popular article. I'm sure you've already a lot of people here have already seen it. But uh, mm. what do we think of world quests that are like? challenging puzzles i love it like they had some of those in legion like the you know calligraphy and uh the cure and tour ones and now this is coming back so is this good is this uh rage uh inducing <laughs> uh what do we think of this <laughs> what do you think no, I'm, I'm totally fine with it as long as mm -hmm. it's sparing and it's not all the time because that was the problem with the turtle one the turtle one isn't that bad mm -hmm. but we were doing it they only had like four variants or three variants on turtle quests yeah. every day mm -hmm. and then pushed us to do all the world quests like pretty much every day so we that's why we hated it if it's sparing and it's not all the time it's totally fine like i really don't like now i can go and do an ajatar unlock the rune puzzle i'm fine with it it doesn't make me annoyed or anything like that but when we were doing the ajatar rep and we we're doing three or four a day for a game i'm not particularly interested in that's when it got on my nerves uh so mm -hmm. i'm totally okay with this more variety i'm fine with it i'm mm -hmm. absolutely fine 
Yeah, I think more variety is key to, to be, a lot of it. Mm -hmm. um, a little shorter, um, because especially if your server has lag at the start and this is really long, you could mess up really easily. Um, and like I said, like it just it just seems that it goes on a little too long for it to be feeling like fun. Yeah. But I think that you know, if this is optional, you know, obviously you don't want this to be like the only source of a theoretical rank 15, you know, a conduit. Oh. Um, <laughs> that's beer again. Uh, you have to be in this game for 15 minutes. And yeah, that's so how you get this one. And survive. Well, her voice really tweets out. We have just data mined the latest build. It turns out rank 15 conduits come from Flappy Bird endless moment. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, you need to no. upgrade it as well. Like this is yeah. the base version. You get like twelve <laughs> buttons that do different things and ever increasing puzzles. <laughs> but yeah, I mean I feel like a lot of the puzzles in the past were just sort of like fun side additions and if you like doing them, you could do your little puzzle in game. Um but if you weren't someone that needed that, you know, hundred extra rep from the world quest or you didn't like the reward, you could just, you know, Kind of skip it and go on your way um mm -hmm. and you know maybe maybe tie like a fun achievement to it or a title if you do all these you know wacky world quests for the collectors who like doing bizarre you know mini puzzles but uh mm -hmm. if it's not tied to um you know anything important it seems okay to put it in but i do think it, it does seem really difficult so maybe having like baby flappy bird quests that are a little <laughs> shorter would be uh good mm -hmm. Because this, this seemed pretty hard mode. I don't know if you want to show part of the, the clip, Annie, just in case people are like, let me, how bad is this? I, yeah. actually, I didn't save it. I only saved the picture. Let me let, let me get it and we can show people. Uh, but yeah, yeah no, like I, I, I think it makes sense to not want to have something which is too long. Because even if you enjoy puzzles, it may not be that fun uh, to, you know, have to be there for, for too long time when you're just trying to finish your emissary. Um, let's see. I will have it here. Yeah, it looks so funny. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Ahead of the second. curve, Flappy Bird. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Flappy oh, Paladin. Yeah. Well, did you like the one that we had in Legion? Do you remember the one where we had to, like, drop and you got the jump charges? That one? Oh, yeah. Like, you sort of floated through the air yeah, in yeah. different directions. And they have the wall. I mean, yeah, that, that was kind of cool. Like, you felt good when you finished it. It was, it broke up it the monotony. The yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I mean. As long as it's sparing, not all the time, then I think it's fine. I, like, I don't really have an issue with it. Hopefully, they don't just like, there's six of these on the map today. Enjoy. Or it's like, oh, you know, you need to, uh, not the emissary, because that's going away, but the replacement. It's like, oh, you need to, you know, get your quest done for this faction, and there's six of them up. And, like, you want to get it done because there's, like, a really cool, you know, relic in the uh, replacement emissary cast. Like, you don't, you don't want that situation. But if it's sparingly, you know, why not? Like, yeah. maybe each maybe each faction has, like, a silly, not faction, covenant has, like, a silly optional funny minigame type thing that, uh, you know, they're associated with. Like, the paladin, the, the Kyrian's got Flappy Bird because angels, but, I don't know, maybe Ardenweald has some weird... Uh, garden terror rowing thing you have to do instead and maldraxxus's spikes and stuff like that yeah venthyr's done the i've done a few of the venthyr ones which are usually revolving around the guy who doesn't like the sun so you have to like find his umbrella you have to find all these tea party right. stuff and you know all that because <laughs> he's such a gentleman uh yeah. that's the kind of stuff i've seen there but i haven't seen anything quite on the scale of this uh for any of the other factions yeah i've and done the maldraxxus stuff as well <laughs> world first flappy yeah. bird in world of warcraft Big. Yeah, it should yeah. be a it should be a round first achievement for that. Actually. <laughs> I want them yep. to return just for this, so we yep. all know when it happens. Preach is going to be casting I? like the Flappy Bird race to world first. I will do the Flappy Bird Invitational, no problem. Yep. I'll do it free of charge. I'll sit there. I just feel I've like got when some zingers lined up. When you go back into old world quests, I feel like the uh, the puzzle ones are always more interesting than like ten kill ten of this. Uh, oh, so, definitely. and especially if there is a bit of variety as well uh so there is some like the turtle one I, I like the memory game for example i think the ones where you have to go through the labyrinth is annoying because it's a, it feels a bit slow um 
And then in Nashatar, I like the Bejeweled game. And I think the Ley Lines is also cool. You know, pretty straightforward, but still a yeah. little bit puzzly. It had some personality to it. Yeah. Like, for example, we're talking about World Quest. You're not like, oh, man, like in Nashatar, I remember the quest where I killed like 10 Naga in the northern corner. You're like, oh, you know, I like the Ley Lines. Like, yeah. it, it, it's yeah. what you associate with the zone. Yeah, Bejeweled or Candy Crush, which, whichever game you prefer to call it. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I, I welcome those kind of puzzle games all the time. But I'm also a huge fan of puzzles in general. So even if the puzzle is extra annoying and extra long, I would probably still like it. So I'm a little bit biased. Um, but yeah, I, I th I'm, I'm all for variety. All yeah, for sure. variety. So another thing that's opened up for testing uh, on the beta has been uh, Mythic Plus testing uh, and keys. Uh, so do you have any thoughts on uh, what the testing has been like so far? It also seems like the final bosses in these dungeon on higher difficulties are pretty interesting and uh, very heavy uh, on mechanics. Like, it seems that a lot of the, the Gahuni boss in Mist seems to be difficult. <laughs> He's uh, nice, time. And the Plaguefall final boss with the tentacles. So what, what do you think of the oh, testing okay. so far? Yeah. Uh, well, it, this is such a fun time for us. Like, we, we, we often joke, but it's so nice when the US realms and the EU realms come together and you get yeah. to play with your friends uh, from all across the world because we do meet up all the time, uh, you know, a few times a year. <laughs> But we never get to play the game together. It's ridiculous. Uh, so this is this is the great period where we can all Mythic Plus and do some dungeons together. Um, but we're, the game's so broken right now. Like some classes do exceptional damage. Some do like less than fifty percent. Some bosses hit four times harder than the last one you did. Mm. Some trash is ridiculous. Like it's so much fun though because you're just wiping. I think we had one hundred and thirty wipes inside of uh, Turn Turn Aside. I think that's the name of it. Uh, yeah. But it was so much fun. Like we were we were enjoying ourselves the whole mm -hmm. way, and we had we had I think sixty or fifty deaths in Plaguefall today, uh, just messing around with that. Half of them were on like one boss. That's the perfect experience. It. That's good. It's so we love it. Yeah, like, it's such a blast. Like mm -hmm. we were laughing the whole way through. Mm -hmm. Um, the mechanics do seem pretty heavy though. I'm really not sure what they're gonna do with that last boss and turn aside. So if people don't know, it has a mechanic that learns how you move. Oh. and gets gets smarter so it has three phases where so what happens is a green pool will appear and that means he's about to do his poison thing but it's not actually landing there what that means is it's checking how your character is moving and it's trying to predict where you're going to be so in phase one oh. it's like pretty inaccurate it'll be near the green thing right and then phase two it gets a little smarter by phase three, and our Shadow Priest uh, friend recorded this, he did like some real disco stuff where he was all, it still worked out exactly where he was going to be and it kills you. <laughs> That's <laughs> like, <it's> terrifying. <laughs> oh, yeah, he was screaming. He was over. just like, yeah. I can't do anything here. Like, this is ridiculous. You, he was all over the place. Uh, so, I don't know. Pugs might struggle with that one a little bit. Uh, but it's sounds hard to fun, say. Though. Are we under gear? Oh, it was so fun. We were having. Yeah, it sounds fun. very unique as well, and we like really funny stream clips. Like, I'm like, why is this thing so smart? Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious. It's really good. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see. But, but, but we, we don't know. Are we undertuned? Is the boss overtuned? We have no idea. Um, Does it simply one shot right now? It's it's about eighty percent, but there's okay. so much more going yeah. on during the same fight. It's pretty crazy. It yeah. Mind controls you. It permanently stuns you, as in permanently stuns you. Mm. It uh, prevents you from casting any spells. It fixates you. It drops pools on the floor. It's a real. There's a lot happening yeah. at that boss, but the rest it's of them have been hilarious. Oh yeah, it seems like uh, mm -hmm. in BFA there's sort of like oh you know you just sort of you know plow through the bosses like they're all just you know really easy. So it's it's interesting how. Now there might there could be an expectation that the final boss will give you um, more of a challenge with more complicated um, mechanics. Okay. Um, imagine, I, think, I think that's a good thing. Imagine you have a key for this dungeon now, and oh, yeah, uh, yeah. you see these people signing up. You see this, uh, let's say, mage. This mage is signed up. There's three mages actually, three mages, all similar experience, similar gear. Only one is Venthyr. <laughs> Trying to bring it back, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> to to in my... <laughs> yep. <laughs> but one has fleshcraft, which is huge. It's not. <laughs> yeah, when you were talking about the shadow yeah, creeping, like, I can't do anything. I'm like, well, yeah, but they can't do anything anyway, so, you know. <laughs> oh! Oh, <laughs> yeah. wow. 
<laughs> See, I didn't say that, Shadow Priest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in your corner. Poor Shadow Priest. <laughs> What One of our main priest? writers is like a dedicated shadow priest, so we always kind of work in some jokes. Not anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> oh, no. Shadow priest in, 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 at heart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But they're great. The dungeons they've done so far, there's only one dungeon I dislike in all of the Shadowlands. Like I said, we're hosting uh, a dungeon round table. Uh, I'll literally be moderating it, and that's going to be in just under two weeks uh, with all the. with a selection of the top dungeoners in the world uh, cool. and hopefully we can get blizzard on the on the table as well uh, one of their designers we're hoping Definitely let us know when that's coming because you know yeah. we'll, we'll do the full like live blogging discord notification yeah, it's, twitter uh, it's, treat, treat, treatment yeah the guest the like guest list is almost finalized we're just yeah. setting uh, a date there's some things for us to work around so it'd be just under two weeks and that gives us plenty of time because there's only four dungeons you could do right now on mythic plus mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. hopefully in the next couple of weeks they'll have been able to test all of them yeah so and the keys are like pretty back. low as well and we don't know the seasonal affix yet so there's still mm -hmm. still some things that would be good to know and test before you have the round table the new volcanic is definitely going to annoy some casters it turned out i didn't know this but most of the casters that i play with never move out of volcanic and Blizzard obviously realized that the casters just didn't care that Volcanic existed at all. <laughs> right. But now they've changed it so it throws you about 30 yards in the air. And it can chain proc oh. under you and just kill you from 100 to zero oh, while you're know. bouncing up and down. What do your caster <laughs> friends think? I mean, obviously it's annoying, but if the fact that they're able to ignore the mechanic doesn't sound like a good design. So are they like, yeah, it's annoying, but we were kind of got a freebie beforehand? Or uh, do they still want it to be tuned to be, um, you know... Of course they want, to, they, they want it to be they want it to, the to be ignored way. they could do more damage of course they want that <laughs> blizzard's obviously gone no that's not what we designed so we've done something about it but yeah of course they want to just nuke away <laughs> volcanic was changed <laughs> once already right because i feel like in the past i i had to move because it would be right underneath me if the key's high enough but now they kind of like just spawn in random places well they do that predictive movement similar to what they've in implemented on that boss is it tries oh, that's to what it's using out where you're going to... yeah yeah it tries to oh, work we're more... using oh. that tech interesting so sometimes it just spawns right next to you but it's likely that you were moving and then stopped as it spawned so okay. it thought you were moving there that so explains uh... it yeah i wonder what the dial is on the ai because you can feel it get stronger in uh, the turn aside boss you feel it get stronger and get better so these they clearly have some sort of like ai level and they go right put <laughs> i wonder where else we're gonna see the ai because i i definitely feel that if it's being used in punishing ways in uh dungeons that it's definitely gonna make an appearance on mythic uh sire denathrius or um what if, something mean in the future what if the volcanic gets oh. smarter throughout the dungeon and it becomes really the bad higher at the, the end. key the smartest it gets <laughs> That would be so annoying. Like a rain volcanic. Like Especially if you're the one that doesn't move. So it starts targeting you more. Because it knows it's going to yeah. get you. You end up with like five volcanics around you all like, the time. This guy doesn't move. Let's put all of them on him. Yeah, our mage would be in big trouble if that was happening. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that, that's interesting. Ketsu, you know, mentioning that, you know, Islands had uh, AI in BFA. And we all, you know, meme on Islands. But it seems like that tech has now reached... A new level yeah. and is being used in different situations and blizzard often talks about that how you know they'll build the garrison system but want to reuse elements in the future so it doesn't feel like wasted code um you know elements from the artifact system or the relic system uh showing up later so um you know uh maybe this will be the legacy of islands being used for <laughs> very terrifying uh mythic plus uh mechanics <laughs> it is terrifying countered by venthyr though ironically <laughs> given everything we've said <laughs> the trick is actually just to venthyr at the last second and it can't work that out <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right so we're inviting the mage blink. who is venthyr there well, it they is got blink. bad example ruined <laughs> well they, they need as many blinks as they can use right true yeah that actually does work a little bit but it's better for the, the paladins who are just running in circles, hoping for the best. True. Paladins mm -hmm. and, uh, I guess, DKs, the wheelchair classes. <laughs> but strong, though. They do so much damage. They well, not, do. Not paladins. They really do. The right now. <laughs> 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 if we had a rep paladin run in, he had full legendaries, everything is like 200 DPS. <laughs> 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 but I'm popping off. <laughs> you know, I, I'm all lit up. I look gorgeous. So take that in. Mm-hmm. But I'm interested if you guys have any dungeons that you've not liked or liked the most, because so far they've been really interesting. 
Besides one, I, the Sanguine Depths is the one I really dislike. I know. So what, what's the issue with Sanguine Depths? Uh, it's and just you, one corridor I'm... over and over. And yeah, it have... just looks boring. Yeah, yeah it's like you, you go from some yeah. of these. Some of the dungeons are so cool, like Spire of Ascension, Necrotic Wake. There's a big theme. It all makes sense as a corrupted temple. And then you go into the Sanguine Depths, and it's just corridor after corridor, the same corridor over and over again. You get a cool mm -hmm. circular room, but you're in it for less than 5% of your time spent in the dungeon. Mm -hmm. You do one boss and then you're out. Uh, and then you're back into corridors immediately afterwards. You do a gauntlet in the corridors. And you're like, oh, come on. <laughs> Give me a... <laughs> I've done yeah. 19 corridors. I'm fine. That's the only one, though. Everything else has been great. I think that mechanically, Theater um, of Pain uh, is interesting how mm. you have to like pick your allegiances at the start and has the the biggest number of bosses. Um, I think there's a lot of creative potential uh, with that there. Uh, visually, uh, Miss of Tirna Scythe, because it's, again, you know, very art and wield. And I guess for lore reasons, uh, the other side, because, you know, we actually see Juan Zombie again, who is, you know, always really fun to be around. You've got the Millhouse gnomes. You have a lot of crowd-pleasing characters in that. Yeah. We actually did a pug in the other side today, and the guys, the, the, the last boss is a little tricky to work out exactly what it's doing. Um, and they actually thought it was bugged. They tried like a few times during that day, and they thought it was bugged. Uh, but it, it just said out they weren't sure what you're supposed to do there. So there's a couple of bosses like that where the method of defeating it isn't exactly clear. Uh, mm -hmm. And you can kind of muddle through it. And the last boss on the other side is definitely a big example of that. Like, it's it's tricky. They've changed that boss three or four times, I think, over the course mm -hmm. of the alpha. They kept changing it every time we did it to try and get it right. I think they've got it pretty good now, though. The last it's a boss. Great looking boss. The last boss with the AI. What dungeon was that? Uh, the Mist of Turn Scythe, the big uh, Gahuni man. Gotcha. Okay. It's yeah. interesting because so when curious. we I first data mine things, yeah, go people were like, <laughs> oh, Mist only has three bosses. Like, it's, this is going to be like the boring one. But then getting to the second boss has that unique mechanic. And then the third boss has the AI. So uh, I think the data mining was sort of deceptively underselling it. And now uh, it's uh, more interesting than we mm -hmm. thought at first glance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's one of the ones that's going to get nerfed. So it's it's kind of the fun part of the beta that not many people mm -hmm. get to see unless you get the invite is to go and try those things before they change them because it's not going to be like that when it comes right. out. Right. And I mean, it's, you also have things like the character templates. Um, you know, sometimes during a PTR, you have your own character transferred over. And if you've taken like a break from the game or if you don't like your gear, you can be like, oh, I can't just jump into this dungeon because my gear is sort of... Yeah, but mm -hmm. with the templates, you already um, have everything in a decent set of gear, so you can just focus on uh, doing the content you like instead of, you know, grinding all these things out. Mm -hmm. Especially with the covenants, you know, you can just buy the conduit. You don't have to worry about the stress of um, yeah. swapping all that out. You can just it's keep making stressful. infinite characters and <laughs> having different conduit and soulbind setup. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a great opportunity to do all those things. So we did the um, Elemental Shamans the first day Torgas came out, where they were so broken. It was unbelievable. Where one chain lightning could clear like a whole floor. Oh. It was yeah. insanely fun. They nerfed it the next day. Oh, <laughs> very nice. Nice. We had one day yeah, of fun at least. We went my kids ago, let's just do it one more time because they're going to change this. It's already gone. Yeah. Like, oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> it was such stupid fun to have in the game. Mm hmm. But always worth it. Always jump on a PTR and check those things out because the PTR is free even if you don't get into the beta. When they that is the true. Yeah. Going, always worth it. If you are interested in the beta, you gotta make sure that you've opted in because mm -hmm. that's the only way for Blizzard to know that you're interested in playing the beta in the first place. Uh, and once you've done that, you just um, sit tight and um, hope to get a key. Mm -hmm. There are no keys actually uh hope to get an invite rather it's invitation only there are no keys being sold anywhere uh don't click uh fishy emails that is telling you to fill something in in order to get access uh just open your launcher click the drop down menu and see if you have access after opting in and i think from what it sounded like they are probably going to do new invite waves every week um as uh a lot of people end up uh, not spending that much time on it, so they just want to stagger it to not have too many people at once and just keep inviting new people all the time. Yeah, yeah. Got... I really think that with like the focus testing we were talking about earlier, that if they could extend that to other things, like everyone gets to do dungeons or you know everyone gets to try something out, I think that would really help, especially as mm -hmm. BFA continues to drag on and they've thrown us so many different BFA buffs already. Like you know they gave us uh, 
XP, they gave us reputation, they gave us time walking reputation, they yep. gave us a corruption vendor, they gave us the legendary cloak. I feel like to keep everyone excited, they can start doing focused um, mm -hmm. free for all weekends, testing different Can things. we have reputation buff again? I'm still missing some Paragon reputation <laughs> rewards. I need my rank four essences. Thank you, Blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Like, uh, we don't raid testings this month, so there's likely to be a huge wave for. Uh... Of invites, yeah, yeah. and it's July twentieth, mm -hmm. and there's not too many weeks left in July, so that needs to be starting soon. Well, mm -hmm. did, they say, did they say this month or in a month's time? Um, the next. I month? thought they said this month. I thought they said it, this month. Yeah, and they said that right at the start of July. Um, so it's, could have been I mean, Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we're nearly done with the actual show notes. So usually if you're new to the show, um, as we're wrapping up with the last topic, we uh, invite chat to ask questions and we compile them during the final topic. So if you have any questions about anything we've discussed or things you would uh, like us to briefly discuss, you can start letting us know and uh, someone, one of the Wowhead moderators like Sass, will be uh, noting them down. And um, yeah, you know... Um, it's a lore topic, so I know not everyone has as many thoughts on that, so you guys can keep an eye out on chat as well for interesting questions. Um, but I did have to mention that uh, Shadows Rising, the Shadowlands prequel novel, uh, has released. Uh, it's been out uh, nearly a week now. Uh, mm -hmm. We have some interesting uh, articles by Novel up on Wowhead. He did an interview with the author Madeline Rue, and we learned a lot of really interesting things about how a book is created when it's by a franchise like you don't plan the plot or who ends up with who like blizzard tells you what's going to happen uh so i think that even if maybe you're not a big reader it's interesting to see how uh an author in a creative industry has to um work with uh with blizzard in a way you may not have you know assumed yeah uh so and uh too. Yeah, like you can have some flexibility, but mm -hmm. when the end of the day, even things like the the color of a spell that comes out from someone's oh hand, that freeze that frame though. Even... Yeah, it seems like we're what losing. Oh, did I... Yeah, okay. Preach is still here, so it's not on my end then. Um, I'm okay. Let's see. We're under Europe. Hi, Perk. Can you hear us? Yeah, I never stop hearing you guys. Okay. And you're, you're a little quieter because you're talking about lore, but I heard all your projections. <laughs> <laughs> I was politely waiting. Yeah. Uh, okay, you seem um, okay now. I guess I could maybe, to be sure, change to US East. So let me just do that quickly. Okay, I think we should be safe now. Okay. But yeah, not to put too fine a point on it, but if you're interested in how... Uh, a book is crafted for a big franchise, you should definitely uh, check that interview out. Mm -hmm. And it was not the first uh, lore interview as well, so I thought I, I thought he did a great job with that. Mm -hmm. um, I think and maybe then, Preach should be next with a lore interview. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> uh, I, think I, I can use Google Preach, though, right? I heard of Susan Windrunner. Yeah, one of yes. the Windrunner sisters. Mm -hmm. And people seem <laughs> well, very... Well, I think uh... you're better than Tettles. <laughs> I remember with Dazara Lord Tettles was like, why are we fighting Jaina? Like, we, who is Jaina? Like, <laughs> Wait, did he yeah. really say who is Jaina? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, why is she powerful? Like, why are we fighting her? <laughs> yeah. She was in the other game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See? He knows his stuff. Preach knows his stuff. I played it. She was in a cutscene in another game. Yeah. Big. There it is. <laughs> Big character. <laughs> And uh, another novel plug, uh, every month novel and I do a lore collaboration. We pick a video topic and uh, also the general direction of the script. And then uh, he makes the video. I do an article on Wowhead where I, you know, summarize the characters and the points and link to, you know, Wowhead coverage or quests you can do related to that story topic for more immersion. And our July feature uh, went up yesterday, and it was uh, on Shadows Rising, unsurprisingly. And we just run down the main characters and the dramatic plot points, uh, which is good if you aren't, you know, a big reader or a lore expert. Uh, they did say in the book that they, uh, in the interview, that they didn't want people to feel like they had to buy the book to understand the plot of Shadowlands. They tried to keep 
the material more like low key character development or setting things up. But it's still an interesting rate read I found. There's lots of kind of like second tier characters that don't have a lot of time in game that have little fun cameo appearances like Jaina's mom and G Firepaw. Uh so, you know, if you don't want to read, um check out the Wowhead article giving you the TLDR. And if you do like to read, then um you can get the book or the audiobook narrated by Queen Talanji. And uh, I know people have been really enjoying the audiobook and um, just the way the voice actor obviously handled Solange because he's a main character in it. Mm-hmm. Can I ask you a question so, on that? Uh, yeah. Are the Soulbind characters mentioned in the book at all? No. It... Because one of the things I brought, just to give it context to the question, Yeah. Uh, uh, one of the things I brought up with Ian when we suggested her a more roleplay heavy way of incorporating the powers is he said we can't because of the way we've written the story of the Shadowlands. So I'm just curious if there's any teasers mm. in the book that might indicate what, why that's the case. Because they've clearly written something that probably doesn't make that work. Right. So the, the book takes place um, leading up to the Ice Crown cinematic, and the epilogue takes place like five minutes after the cinematic happens. Okay. So it doesn't actually um, occur in the Shadowlands, Mm-hmm. But I do think there are some plot points leading to, like, Anduin, you know, maybe uh, embracing the shadow in addition to the light, because, uh, you know, Anduin's one of the characters that tries to go into the mall. Like, we see him, we, we try to help him in Shadowlands. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it sets up some of the context for the other side dungeon and Bwonsamdi and... Uh, it explains a lot of why Bwonsamdi was trying to befriend Talanji um and uh why the jailer doesn't like him that's sort of the main plot point takeaway i think of the book we learn more about that angle and how different uh like uh, important characters in the realm of death don't necessarily uh like each other because they have different um ideals but yeah soul binds are not mentioned at all uh the closest we get is we learn uh we get a glimpse of what the terror of the maw feels like but we that like a character appears in the maw for you know a minute and then is brought back to life so mm-hmm. it's very much on our end in azeroth lots of wrapping up bfa zones uh and then this sort of you know ends ominously with sylvanas all very smug and pleased that she you know shattered the helm and her future now lies in the shadowlands instead of azeroth mm. when's she gonna pop up do you think Huh. Well, they they said in an interview, I forget which one, that they thought that BFA was too mysterious and they want a point pretty early on that there'll there'll be a dialogue with her and some other important character that will make her motives clear. Uh, Whether you you like them or not is up to you, but they said they just (laughs) want to like get it out there what what her what her deal is uh, early on in Shadowlands. I have not seen that quest yet, though. Yeah, I haven't seen anything. I haven't seen a pop up yet. Yeah, there was a whole other can of worms where uh, in the Wowhead lore interview at the event, uh, we're like, hey, you know, redemption is a big theme. Is she, uh, will she be redeemed? Is she beyond redemption? And we got an answer basically to the idea was, well, you know, she's like a cosmic figure now. She's um, beyond like a redemption narrative like Kalthos or not. It's just, do we, uh, will we understand what she is doing on a bigger cosmic scale? Um, So... That would be interesting to see because I think it's also hard to make a story feel relatable when you're dealing with, you know, uh, gods and, you know, goddesses that have uh, superpowers as opposed to something that feels more human uh, and down to earth. But, you know, Mm. we'll see. I think Blizzard has done a better job of hiding uh, lore lore spoilers. Like, I remember in Legion, the very first day, we data mined a quest and the objective was, like, Varian dies. I was like, oh, surprise, you know, <laughs> dead Barry and Broken Shore. To be fair, you went digging. <laughs> you know, yeah. You did uh, get a shovel and start digging. Yeah, and then, like, with BFA, there were so many hints leading up to uh, Teldrassil or, you know, every patch we could piece together um, the storyline, and they've done a better job in hiding that information or revealing it at key moments. Uh, so there's less speculation going on in advance. Like, they had a... The day they released a book not a book excerpt about Nathanos, they popped up Nathanos uh, on the beta as a killable boss. Mm. And the people that read the book 
you know, blurb uh, that was public were like, oh, like, now I'm, I'm hyped about Nathanos showing up again because I just read him, you know, plotting in this book, and now I see him uh, on the beta, and he popped up on a day that wasn't tied to uh, a reset or a new build. Mm. So I think they're trying to be more, um, more smarter about how they are releasing the story so it's not, like, me sitting here with 3,000 lines of data mine text trying to, like, reorder them into the semblance of a story and hope I get it right. Mm-hmm. It's more sophisticated, I think, in mm-hmm. Shadowlands. Can I ask you a question? Okay. Have you ever intentionally put them in a wrong order because it's hilarious and then released it? Or like, like April Fools, we've data mined this quest and you just stuck all these lines together and it's just come up with the most ridiculous quest ever. So I haven't done that exactly, but sometimes Guilty. if I... <laughs> I, I feel all like... over your face. Guilty. <laughs> so sometimes I'll like do minor tweaks or typos to see if other people are like oh like we found this too mm-hmm. and i'll be like no because like i put that in the wrong order or i like you know like move commas around and stuff <laughs> oh so. sorry, you're guilty there was a pause there where you could see the guilt wash over yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep oh that's what happened to the level 15 or rank 15 conduits <laughs> yeah, we found rank 15 PvP and the word conduits closer to <laughs> Yeah, and then she just put them together. <laughs> we tried real is. hard with that, like, we could have gone super clickbaity with that, and, like, we, I think Squishy put, like, a paragraph in red text being like, we don't know what that, what this is, like, it could be something bad, but we, it could be unused, because, yeah. you know, it's, it's not really fun to Blizzard if we make them you know, intentionally panic on the weekend. And like we said, they, they they were sort of hands off with data mining for so long. And now they're viewing it more favorably that we don't want to give anyone ammo to be like, oh, Brightpaw, no, what are you doing? Brightpaw has enabled Siri. Hold on. No, Brightpaw, no Siri. He's... Okay. Paul just now wants I get a friend. That's <laughs> all. Skill just wants to talk. But yeah, oh, I just, Siri, I just when don't... are they going to talk about feral cats? Exactly. There are no cat models in Shadowlands. This is an issue. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I just, you know, we try to have fun sometimes with tongue-in-cheek with titles or a meme, but Mm -hmm. it's been a really long journey to get data mining more um, accepted because there was a stigma that sometimes it could be wrong or um, make players panic about things or have them uh, obsess over the wrong thing versus something that could be testable. So we try to generally keep things um as honest as we uh can yeah, yeah. and show that it can be mm-hmm. taken uh seriously and we i think we've made pretty good strides um in shadowlands mm-hmm. um We've you know, between... we held off yeah. on a lot because there's just yeah. so much that happens so quickly you have to say hang on a minute <laughs> history yeah. tells us this probably is if it doesn't feel right you can make a video about anything but if it doesn't feel right you kind of know this isn't gonna stay Mm-hmm. You know, I could have, like we talked about earlier, I could have gone, Ellie Shamans are so broken in Torgas. Everybody <laughs> roll an Ellie Shaman right now. But we know at the time, yeah. this is probably not going to be how it works. Yeah. And the tuning's wrong right now. I could make a video today. It's like, Hunters are overpowered. Look, look. But, yeah, no, we're going to read like all these class happens. changes and we'll just keep making a video on class changes every week because, oh my oh, God, we could it do changes it every week. week. <laughs> mm-hmm. Clickbait your titles ever. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. The DK's are so broken. Mm-hmm. And, right. But we already we know, like, Mm-hmm. I, 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 the probably five years ago would have done that like this is so stupid <laughs> why would you have done this uh but yeah <laughs> not anymore and imagine right before shadowlands like quickly google which class is broken oh look preach made a video about hunters being broken Please. and let's not I'm consider the sure. fact that he said it two months ago <laughs> uh, I, I think that it's probably still the case i'm gonna roll hunter <laughs> Oh, I'd yeah, say I'm not in the top five anymore. There was I did do a video of when, when an old YouTube network that wanted me to do it, and they were like, "Just do a top five DPS video for us." And I was like, "That's a terrible video. I don't <laughs> want to do that." And they're like, "Please do it." And it, <laughs> I did it for them. It popped up for about three years later. Still, uh, as like the, the top first video. video following you. Yeah, <laughs> everywhere, and it was like two expansions ago. It was so ridiculous. Yeah, there's like sometimes on Wowhead we'll write an article and it will be like, you know, early look, uh, first look at, you know, Mythic Plus system or uh, I remember in BFA, like Ian made a tweet, someone, there was a tweet that implied there was a certain number of items from the cash or the item level was something and they later changed it. And that 
that wrong version of Mythic Plus is like the, the top result that keeps popping up. And we do everything. Thing, yeah. You know, like golden quotes in the post were like, this was changed. Like, go here instead. Like, do not read this article. And it just follows you around. It's like, the still in the stuff. top 10. If you yeah. Google the top five DBS and WoW, it's still there eight years ago. <laughs> oh my God. It's still there. Look, that's yeah. it. It's so bad as well. It's me doing Ultraxian <laughs> in Cataclysm. And it's still in the top 10 if you Google that. Oh my God. I like how your title has a star in it. That's very. He cute. had to. They had all these weird rules that you had to put this like <laughs> giant purple TV in there. Like, why? And a dragon picture. <laughs> what is <laughs> dragon this? Picture. You had to put your dragon picture in because it's an MMO. And I'm like, Ugh. but I was, it was eight years ago. I was just getting started. I, I, it was a big deal to me. Don't judge me. Yeah, I see it here. I Probably see got me paid five dollars. Those original YouTube deals. It's like, oh, four hundred thousand views. That'll be about five, five, um, maybe six dollars in your pocket. A free T-shirt and beta key to some random. Oh no, none of that. No, no, you're yeah. a newbie. Yeah, you get your six dollars and go home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think it's um, time to maybe yeah. move into some questions now. There's yeah. uh, quite a few of them. Uh, we may not go through everything, but we'll try to pick the ones that are interesting preach if you find one that you want to answer you could just uh Where go ahead and read it otherwise we just oh, okay. under shadows rising yeah and, so, uh, uh, okay yeah. yeah so we just have you want me to pick or are you picking if you have one in mind you can go ahead and pick we can all just pick and just... i think we should have preach answer the lore question Hit me. all right I'm which ready. lore question <laughs> No I don't hands, think, wait, so actually, I just Googling. said that without, without oh, okay. actually knowing your reaction. <laughs> Let's see. Is there um, anything yeah. on lore? Um, hmm. I need to go into my mind palace. <laughs> no, but seriously, why don't we just pick something that seems the most uh, interesting? Because we haven't had Preach on the show before, so I feel like we have lots of questions because like, our you know usual audience hasn't heard his mm -hmm. take on things. Okay, I'll I'll just read out the first question. Yeah. Sounds a little bit like a conspiracy. Do you guys think that mm -hmm. they're hiding information about the covenant switching and the fact that they wanted to do the preach interview and the mention of the conduits at the end of it, implying that they're looking for solution ideas from the community? No, you're putting way too much thought into it. <laughs> yeah, also like, it, I mean, <laughs> they wanted not. a discussion, not an interview, and the discussion veered off in a direction not about that topic so i don't really think that was that that was particularly useful for um that topic yeah if they no, were often the cases they're info. just muddling through it that's all <laughs> yeah. they're just like yeah they're gauging feedback that you know you can't just say this is the concrete road and that's what we go it's ever changing mm -hmm. there's not some grand master plan <laughs> like that and the then in two months plan. time we'll have an interview with preach and this we will say <laughs> yeah because, no there's nothing like that they're just like the tossing ideas around what is the community like yeah. What do they dislike? Is there mm -hmm. a better way to go? Mm -hmm. That's it. There's nothing more to it. Next question here. What do you think, guys? What do you guys think? Okay, let me just rephrase this. Um, what do you guys think of covenants being treated like suspects? Think of Legion artifacts, expands on soulbinds, maybe more class spec specific. You can get them all, but you have to grind through it. Yes, me. Uh, Anyone. I mean, we, I've, I would add this to the list of probably, for me, a hundred different solutions, which are really cool <laughs> and uh, yeah, would be nice. Yeah. Uh, spec specific is something we've been asking for since day one. There's, we have homogenized too much towards the class end, and that's mm -hmm. really hurt the hybrids, especially. Uh, mm -hmm. You'll find some really weird stuff with like, we've given you back death coil to every death knight. Now there's a death knight, death coil legendary. <laughs> like they've really had to kind of like oh, yeah. get it in there, you know? Because mm -hmm. uh, what do they all share? So yeah, I, I'm on board with most things that are more spec specific. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I like uh, the the... Binds, it's like a new experimental system, and I think that um, you want to encourage people to use it and not feel scared to change or experiment because you feel it will be annoying to have to uh, swap things or. Mm -hmm. You know, you're missing out on most of the system because mm -hmm. you pick one covenant. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's a, you know, there are many ways to go about it. And I think that's, that could be a decent one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds like it's a, it's an approach of how to uh, counter things being stuck behind a wall uh, by potentially grinding it. That mm -hmm. is definitely a possibility. 
Uh, have you have you guys found any questions that you find interesting in particular? Otherwise, I'll just go through them one by one. Uh, as a nerd, I really like the idea of the uh, this one. Do you think Blizzard is ever going to do anything for alliance raiding? Oh, oh yeah. we have to pretend only one faction exists. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Yeah, this they brought this on themselves. Unfortunately, we all saw it coming. Uh, but uh, I yeah. think they might do something. The problem is. They kind of either need to make it so they need to get the raid guilds over there is what needs to happen. Yeah, that's not an easy sell because everybody is now horde because of the issues they had with the racials in the past. So over the years, if you wanted to raid, you better off go horde. Unless they put something really overpowered over there, and they almost did in Kata. Fun story for you, a bit of trivia: uh, is Dark Flight for the Worgen was so strong in its first iteration that all the guilds told Blizzard like we're all going to have to go alliance if you put this in the game mm -hmm. so they nerfed it um at this point it's really hard it's really hard without making something really broken so we all swap to alliance the problem is our recruitment pool is also on the horde so it's yeah. not a case of our guilds are horde but all our fresh recruits are also on the horde mm -hmm. yeah because the, speci the specific example here given is that 10 to 12 mythic guilds are going horde and leaving ravencrest to you so that's actually my <laughs> server and uh, I noticed that as well. Uh, anyone mm -hmm. that I knew on my server that was Mythic Raiding in multiple different guilds uh, all went Horde. Uh, different different servers, but all Horde. And uh, I'm not sure if uh, anything simple can be made because a lot of the reasoning behind it was, uh, well, it's easier to recruit on Horde. And we're yep. kind of struggling now. So we need to recruit more players and we have a higher chance of being able to do so on the Horde side. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, at this point, uh, even a free transfer, I'm not sure if that would fix anything either. That would do nothing. None of us are going to take it. Because it's just, you <laughs> yeah. know, it, there's a bigger pool of players to choose from. Mm -hmm. And that's a similar to example of Blizzard, you know, being uh, idealistic. Like Blizzard might say, oh, well, you know, it doesn't really matter outside of, you know, the top guilds min-maxing their racials, but it trickles down and then you're left with a situation mm -hmm. where more people are just on one side and it's easier to recruit even if you're you know not mm -hmm. a leading edge guild or maybe you don't care about racials you just want a guild where you can find um more bodies easily mm -hmm. uh, yeah and interesting enough if someone saying just kill the racials they did but it's too late we we already yeah, yeah that's the uh, thing so the culture it, was already... it's too late now mm -hmm. yeah the, the racials are within like a percentage of each other which mm -hmm. i know people argue about this one percent and min maxing and all that we really don't care about one or two percent in any way it's a case of uh it's a case of it's just way too late. We all went Horde, and over the years, even though they did kill the racials, anybody who wanted to raid went Horde as well. So the actual tilt keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger towards the Horde side. So mm -hmm. it's not. there's no easy fix to that at all. There really isn't. No. Yeah. Oh, I've got a Soulbind question mm -hmm. here. Yeah, do you want to read it? Yeah. Uh, Ian wants to make Soulbinds less flexible, so what if the trade-off for unbreakable, unbreakable Conduits is... The soul bind follows a raid lockout. Let me reread that. He wants to make soul bind. the grammar is a little flexible. twisty. Uh, I don't think he does want to make things less flexible in the soul binds. He actually wants them to be quite flexible, I think. So, what if the trade off for unbreakable conduits uh, is the soul bind follows a raid lockout? I guess he means less flexible in the sense of you're not like, meant so to swap on the out fly. conduits all the time. Yeah. Uh, I... Like he was talking about is, not yeah. running something like POE or just like you're in the field and you can just change everything at once. I, th I think that's what the person is referring to. Because, yeah, I do remember Ian was saying that he didn't want people to feel scared about changing, um, swapping between the three soul binds. Yeah, I'm not sure if that is Ian's intention. Um, yeah, no, I don't, I don't think so. I think I he means think within a soul, bound, uh, soul bind. Uh, within... If soul binds follow raid locks, oh my god. <laughs> Please no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's that, that sounds even what worse. I want to do with my character, it's mine. <laughs> yeah. Please just let me do what I want with it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I don't think Ian wants any of that stuff. Um, and I don't think we want to start locking them down to raid locks either. That's that, no thanks. Yeah, I think that sounds a bit too hard. I don't like anything there. And it's like, oh, we it's must maintain lie. our characters of you know have a character of that class with different soul binds. We're gonna swap them in on different fights. oh yeah imagine that oh we are looking if it depends on the conduits though that might be worth like <laughs> from the from a top no really like from a top end point of view if we're going to be feel like the best maneuver is to multi-box multiple characters for the different covenants right if that is if the difference coming up to the launch is so large that that seems reasonable at that point you might as well go all in 
Like, there's yeah. really no I reason mean, not yeah. to at that point. I can see top end raiders and potentially top end PvPers also who played multiple specs to start doing that. Just level multiple characters. That way you can play whatever is needed for that specific fight or that specific uh, scenario. It becomes down to efficiency. We did it in classic because respecking got so expensive for the people who enjoyed playing their full class. Yeah. A lot of my friends had multiple of the same class because it was just more efficient. Yeah. It was cheaper. Like if you wanted to focus on PvP on a orc that could resist stuns, mm -hmm. but you did you liked the other character in PvE, it was cheaper to have a different character of the same class. Mm -hmm. Which we don't want to go back to. We tried it, Blizz. We said no. <laughs> he gave us dual spec. <laughs> yeah. Well, so more casual players obviously won't be leveling three, four characters of the same class to try different covenants. Um, but mm -hmm. depending on how good the balance is, uh, people might feel uh, a bit punished if they had the wrong one. Alt question. Potentially. Honestly, how likely will it be to be able to maintain alts and shoutdowns as it currently stands? From what I've heard, I feel like it's going to be a lot more alt friendly in general compared to... Um, BFA, the problem lies more within that specific character itself, where we feel like even our mains might have troubles because of being locked behind covenants. Uh, what do you think, Preach? Um, How does it feel? Feels fine, honestly. I'm, I'm okay with it. Mm -hmm. I really, I feel like yeah, alt friendly, and main unfriendly. <laughs> no, I just think they're designing so much of it about being about alts. And I think that's the big feedback we got from early Torghast testing is like people will level alts just to try it out in Torghast, mm. right? So Torghast is, he doesn't really, rec as far as we know, and hopefully they don't change this, doesn't really matter what gear you go in with because it's all about how the powers scale and things. Mm -hmm. So you can just get a, a nice character, jump into Torghast and you can have a blast on it. And looking at what you can do in there, I know we, we do Torghast races, uh, like speed runs of Torghast. And it's really fun. Mm -hmm. Once you understand like the nature of your abilities and you can choose them on the fly and do the different builds based on what you're getting early on, Torghast is hilarious. So I, I think alt friendliness has to be a big, big feature. I mean, they stood on the BlizzCon stage and said they're going to be more alt friendly. So mm -hmm. I hope they're that keeping that in mind. Yeah, I think it will the, be more The friendly. feedback question about flying that in Hazel Nutty's interview um, about asking about Pathfinder, uh, she was people were very happy to learn that there wouldn't be rep requirements. It would be tied to getting a renown level because with uh, renown, unlike rep, there is um, a catch up mechanic. So if you do take a break, um, yeah, you have to grind something out, you know, for Pathfinder Part Two. But you should be able to uh, catch up faster than someone feeling like they have to do, you know, so many days of world quest to hit the level for Pathfinder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, a question I hate on Pathfinder, you guys. <laughs> you guys okay with Pathfinder? I mean, does anyone like it? I mean, I do like the mm -hmm. idea of not being able to fly initially in a new zone. Um, yeah, I do. Yeah. But... I like that. I mm -hmm. just hate that I have to convince a guy who lives under the sea for 10,000 years that, <laughs> to like me so I can fly over the ship. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. that really bothers me. Like, mm -hmm. that bit bothers me. It's it's more that the... I like the idea of it. I'm fine with not flying for a while. It's just how we do Pathfinder I really dislike. Yeah. It should maybe just be a thing yeah. which activates after some time. Yeah, my immersion is ruined, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, lovely yeah, experience in Shadowlands. Apparently, everyone will be playing the exact same leveling experience in Shadowlands. No variance. And the last time we did this, um, let me read it more word to word instead of trying to paraphrase. I think the last time we've been forced into such close proximity in the leveling zones was Burning Crusade, but we at least had different quests. War mode will be impossible and lag will be the, the real enemy. Will the servers hold? Yeah, we have phasing tech now. It'll be fine. Yeah, yeah I know. This, this is where the phasing tech comes in strong. Yeah, they were also talking about, like, they spend a lot of time thinking about optimizing and upgrading their servers, and this has uh, already been uh, happening uh, for uh, Shadowlands, even this early on. So, mm -hmm. you know, they're trying to do their best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really don't think it'll be an issue at all. It's uh, It's been fine for the last couple of years. We had the worst one was what? last time yeah the, the, the alliance infancy. garrison oh yeah that's true. you couldn't get yeah, the infancy of the technology then was pretty obvious but um mm -hmm. now it's been fine for a long time mm -hmm. pvp is always the problem so that's <laughs> war mode yeah just don't no go promise war mode then. <laughs> yeah but um uh, ian said in that interview with tonton is that the, because they've 
they they have removed a lot of the proc and random stuff that your characters do it should help a lot with the lag uh mm -hmm. so let's hope they no corruptions yeah exactly no corruptions no like 20 oh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Cars, <laughs> killing mobs. exactly yeah so mm -hmm. ideally it should be much better but it's it's hard to say because right now beta is super laggy so yeah know, it's hard to hard to be sure my leveling concern would be more i think people feel like the old world isn't very tested and some parts feel more uh broken and definitely easier to level in and we don't know what the replacement bonus is for uh the heirloom experience yet um so not exactly the person's question but i feel like that that's something that blizzard needs to look into because no one wants to say oh, if i you know level in in wad because of bonus objectives this will shave off you know hours of my leveling time yeah it's down to like four, four hours now something like that uh Four it's a, a little slower because they removed experience from the heirlooms but it's it's still pretty fast and you know some like wad for example the bonus objectives um it, it makes it uh it's a, it's a unique mechanic that the other ones don't have and that can be tons of experience yeah i know mr gm is doing oh i'm not gonna spoil that actually never mind spoilers <laughs> i'm not sure if that's i'm not sure if that's public knowledge so I'll leave that <laughs> question for mike why does he like Night Face so much? And why is he only choosing the Tumnus people for all his characters? Okay, that's a troll question. And uh, I don't like the Night Face. Really? He's very upset. I don't, no. I don't. Why not? Quest. It just it doesn't connect with me in the role-playing way. <laughs> and uh, I'm not immersed when I'm there. And uh, uh -huh. they won't let me choose a squirrel as my soul shape so i uh, so people I call you a liar <laughs> <laughs> and i i was taught fan. i was taught I'm that you can fan. always trust twitch chat yeah well you know we all had bad lessons <laughs> <laughs> but no i'm not a fan and i actually detest that the most powerful soul binds have a lot of really great abilities and it's the most beautiful zone turned out to be <laughs> night <laughs> So I got played by like a fiddle by Blizz. <sighs> I'm gonna end up night fire, aren't I? Okay, let's try to maybe take maybe one or two more questions. I'm trying to filter these to cover things that we may not have talked about. Um, this might feel a bit broad, but if you have maybe a TLDR answer to this, uh, somebody says, I'd like to know what Preach thinks about the way Mythic Plus keys worked in Legion, how they worked in BFA, and if he has any thoughts on improvements to the key system going forward. Uh, again, so yeah, one answer is I liked Legion. I, I really hope that the movement of Fortifier and Tyrannical, uh, so it kind of grew gradually, was a good idea, because in Legion it was a big problem when it suddenly hit Tyrannical or fortified people just got absolutely wiped out compared mm -hmm. to what they've done the one level below mm -hmm. um but i'm not an expert on mythic plus and i'm not going to pretend to be so we are hosting a mythic plus dungeon gathering in just under two weeks where the experts will be able to answer those questions for you nice uh so that's the best i don't know enough to really comment on mm -hmm. it i i, that's I okay. do my weekly and i'm done that's okay i think he just wants to know your opinion on it so mm -hmm. that's okay and this uh this event that you're talking about is it going to be streamed don't know. Um, we so it may perhaps yet. be YouTube content. Maybe, maybe not. We'll uh, see. It's more it, the the important goal for me. Uh, like I said, I've been speaking to some of these guys. The important mm -hmm. goal for me is to try and get the information out in a way. Yeah. So if if we can get Blizzard involved and they don't want it to be streamed or anything, they want to be an open discussion. Because of course, like the interview I did with Ian, we're in front of thousands of people, right? right. So mm -hmm. you, you you can't be like we you know you sat in a, a room having a conversation mm -hmm. so it depends entirely down to that mm -hmm. yeah i mean i think it would be if it was off stream you know people could do stuff like if you don't know something you could like i don't know go run something to prove a point or take a few minutes to look something up but when it's on stream you feel like you have to be uh entertaining in addition to having uh, a discussion there's just like an extra layer of of work you have to do and you're also I mean. being everything you say is going to be attacked in some way uh, yeah the know, wording so has to be precise, precise as well yeah yeah it's yeah. not easy to do those kinds of discussions as you can imagine with Andy. like every word is going to be analyzed broken down compartmentalized into something uh so if if it's a case the most important part for us is to have the discourse with blizzard 
that's the mm -hmm. most important right. bit over anything. So if that means it needs to take place off stream, off YouTube, that's fine. The conversation is more important. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. I did when I at the event, I was in a group interview with Ian, and I asked him about endgame uh, loot drop rates. And Ian was like, "Don't quote me on this exactly, but I think uh, Mythic Plus loot will probably drop like this." And mm -hmm. you know, first first Wildhead thing submitted to Reddit is like, Ian confirms like <laughs> one yeah. item drops from Mythic Plus. Yep. And I'm just yeah. like, uh. All our words are so heavily manipulated. And yeah, it's it's a it's a minefield every time we go in front of yeah. the, the microphone. Mm -hmm. I think I'll take this question as the last question that I think is. Yeah. Uh, interesting and not something we've already discussed um if you guys find any other question that we're not picking that you want to talk about it then go ahead uh but for now it says for preach with how bfa went do you believe the fact that they're front loading so many systems at the start of shadowlands that if they don't add additional systems in later patches the game may become stale Ooh, that's an interesting take on it actually because yeah, um, we haven't talked about systems today so i thought this was uh yeah or not much yeah. at least uh it's an interesting topic I'm not convinced on the solution to what the borrowed power or whatever you want to label it as is to do with them all at once mm -hmm. um, because of balancing issues, right? They're historically bad at doing one of the systems and now we're doing like four or five <laughs> at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I'm not convinced on that, but no, I don't think so. I think they are absolutely correct in what they're saying is that there's they can add more legendaries. They don't have to create a new legendary system. They could just put in, throw in a couple of new Legos. They can mm -hmm. add a couple of new soul binds via the story. They can add all this stuff into the existing stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just hoping they really have a clear way of explaining all these systems to uneducated players, because it's very heavy when you start Shadowlands. Oh yeah. Within the mm -hmm. first hour, you're yeah. just like, "Here's a system, and here's another one, and here's another one." <laughs> yep. And yep. you're like, "Ooh," and the, it's it's going to be tricky for some people to take it all in for sure. Mm-hmm. Especially, like you said, with Covenants, if they don't understand the weight of it, and you just pick one, and they're oh, like, yeah. ooh. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. It's like, wait, oh, I like, can't really swap? Experienced players is crazy on streams. Yeah. Yeah. Like, these, are, these are great players, and they're just like, I, I can't. This is too much stuff. <laughs> with another talent tree? Another, yeah. another talent tree. And now I need Legos, and you can see the chat saying, yeah, like, you know, because the chat's more educated than a lot of the guys. And Twitch has like, always oh, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you open the bag, and you this, and they're just like, oh, my God. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> <laughs> so it's yeah. gonna be really uh, a, a weird time at the start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we discussed this briefly. Uh, I think last show, or maybe the show before that, w that having a way of putting all the systems in at once might feel overwhelming at first, but it's probably better uh, at the end of the day, especially if it's introduced nicely and properly, like you said. So pe even clueless people can feel like it's not too um, too difficult to understand. And then later on, feel... only branching out instead of adding new systems. Because that was one of the main uh, things that I thought was bad with BFA, the fact that we had a completely new system added uh, later on. So it became a system on top of systems. Like imagine uh, getting the legendary cloak and still knowing that certain dungeons still drop cloaks in the same expansion. It feels kind of wrong. Uh, so it's <laughs> nicer when everything comes at the beginning of the expansion. It feels more whole that way. Systems are intertwined. So you wouldn't want someone casual to be like, oh, I'm going to, I like this one system tied to this covenant. I'm going to pick it. And mm -hmm. then like in a month you're like, oh, like look, there's this other system that was tested on the beta I was not part of. And yeah. now I like you know, a different mm -hmm. covenant. Um, yeah. So at least if it's all out there, um, you know what you're getting at the start. Mm -hmm. If you're educated, you're going to be fine. If you've been watching the videos and reading the Wowhead articles, it won't be too bad. Mm -hmm. But if, for those who haven't, oh. <laughs> yeah. it's going to be an adventure. That's going to be a day. There's always a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, yep. You're going to be like, oh, I choose the ability that I played with. Excellent. Then it just goes, blah. Like, you're always <laughs> so really more. surprised on Wowhead how the most popular article is yeah, every week is like full corruption rotation. And we're like, you know, we've got like this really on top of it audience, you know, class discords. Like, why are people still looking it up? And it's like, well, there's still million, millions of players that aren't in you know that daily playing community that are actually still really excited when gushing moon comes along <laughs> so yeah. there's a huge spectrum of how players approach wow for sure for sure so yeah i think that's I think it we're gonna for the wrap questions it up. Yeah, we, yeah, there were some questions that kind of was covered uh, by us earlier on, so it would uh, not make too much sense to dive into things uh, again, or Preach would have to be here for another five hours, even though we would have liked that to happen. It might not be the most uh, 
fun. Um, it's time for a wrap up, everyone. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you guys for um, also taking your time to ask questions that we could talk about and answer to our best abilities. And thank you to Preach for answering yeah. these questions and taking part in especially the parts about lore and orc customization. I think we all learned a lot of things from uh, Preach being here. Yeah, I, learned. And I learned, let's be honest. <laughs> I learned so much tonight that I have no idea. Yeah. That orc well, thank you for educating me on this stuff. <laughs> And also uh, good luck with your night fae adventures. Um, I, yeah. I think you're going to have a lot of fun <laughs> with that. You know, this is very passive aggressive, honestly, at this point. Yes, with your rank 15 <laughs> night fae uh, conduit uh, doing 50% oh, yeah. more damage. Oh yeah, the rank yeah. 15 conduit for sure. Um, okay. yes. Ian confirms before. rank 15 conduit. Mm -hmm. And uh, Again, on the topic of beta, I know people love beta and want to take a part of it. So uh, just keep an eye on your launcher to see if you have been invited. That is the only right way to know. Uh, don't click emails. Uh, don't buy keys off of eBay. There are no beta keys. And uh, the email should, if anything, only tell you that you've been invited. But even those emails sometimes disappear. Uh, the ones that ask you to click things are most likely scam. Uh, so just Check your browser, sorry, not browser, check your launcher and uh, <laughs> click the drop down and see if you have access there. And um, yeah, that's it for for today. Thank you very much for having me. It was great. Thank you yeah, very this much was awesome. for joining like, We've us. never all gotten to like talk like we said at the start of yeah. the show. Like, we've never really connected at, at BlizzCon. Like we've all been doing this for such a long time. So I think we just assume that people assume we know each other, but we never talked. So no, awesome. they do. Like, I actually so, assume that you guys so know massive. each other. <laughs> Yeah, but I met all the PvPers for the first time. I was just like, you're my heroes. <laughs> Zico walks over and Ben Rukio, and they're like, you'll preach. But we never overlap. Our worlds just don't collide that way. Yeah. Despite us being usually in the same theater hall or whatever. Mm -hmm. We're all there, but it just doesn't happen. Yeah, no, it's it's awesome. So we have this thing on the Wowhood Weekly where we do a high five. You yeah. know, because uh, virtual high fives are yeah. very respectable. Um, you know, that's, I wasn't uh, told about this. I need to speak to my manager. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are respecting social distancing, uh, by doing this <laughs> and we're wondering if you want to join us. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. What order are we in? Hold on. Okay. It so to you're going to have to use two hands because your camera overlaps with both of our cameras. So you're going to high five with two hands at the same time. <laughs> Which direction are you above me, below me, sideways? I'm we are screen. to your to your right, I think, unless your camera is mirrored, and you're gonna have one hand above the other. Okay, hold on. Because like I'm other below side. and in tire, so other side, other side. Other side. All right. Yeah. Okay, you've mirrored me. I'm okay. All right, you ready? Not intentionally. Wait, give me a count. Give me a count. <laughs> Wait, is it? Is am I the left or right hand? Because when when there's a guest, you're I good. swap hands. You're, you're good. Left. Okay. Yeah. Really right. Wait, 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 wait. Are we doing an explosion afterwards? Fireworks? Um, if you have any sound effects. You can like Wait, hit the go desk. for it. Or... Yeah, no, I'll, I'll no, no, snap no. my be... finger. <laughs> this is the amateur high five is about to happen. Are you ready? <laughs> Give me a count. Okay. Okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> okay. Right? Maybe I should have done the countdown. <laughs> you didn't even jazz fingers. <laughs> Worst okay, this was the best high five. Life. I woke up the cat by hitting the desk. <laughs> jazz fingers. Yeah, I, I should I should have probably been the one who does the countdown because you guys are delayed from each other and you guys are delayed from me, but at least I can see you guys. So I would just wait with my movement. <laughs> but it's okay. That was that was awesome. Even Bright Paw approves. Yeah. He's very, he's very like happy. I got woken up from my nap on the desk. <laughs> Maybe in the future we need a it. fireworks effect on it. I think Preach has yes. got something there. Yep. It's a uh, good point. Apparently I just touched a cat's butt. So I'm in a whole world of emotions right now. It may be a tiger for all I know. Oh yeah, right kind of a tiger. makes me a, like a zoo man now. Okay. Yes. Again, thank right, so you very you much, Preach, concept? for coming here and joining us and for sharing your thoughts. And uh, thank you to everyone in the chat for being here, watching. And uh, thank you, Brightpaw, for making thank appearance at, at the end. end of the show. Yeah. All right. Goodbye, Brightpaw. There you go. Goodbye. <laughs> Don't forget to check out Preach on uh, YouTube and Twitter as Preach Gaming and on Twitch as Preach LFW.
Mm. Yeah. And spam his emotes. Yeah. 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 Go, got the cat yeah. Tail. yeah. They, they need encouragement for that. <laughs> yeah, you're not spamming <laughs> enough. Keep spamming. <laughs> uh, have we given away beta keys yet? No. Repeat. There are no beta keys. Don't fall for that. Check your launcher and see if you've been invited. All right. See you guys next week. Any last words, hey. Preach? No, just uh, be good and I hope to see you in the beta. If you do, say hi. All right. Yeah, yeah there it is. Bye-bye, everyone. See you all next week. Bye.